what has the LGBT community done that is so sinful to you guys that you're not happy about? I call it ABC. For me... So you have no problem? No, so do you have a problem? I need to be very careful. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I want a clear answer yeah. to that question. Yeah. What has the LGBTQ done? That's no. what I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to the point. Yeah. Why did the Supreme Court allow this to, ha to, to happen? happen. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because if they allow it to happen, mm -hmm. it means even bandits can form an association. Queer people are people. Queerness is not an idea. Yeah. yeah? Sodom and Gomorrah was not about queerness at all. Oh, at yeah. all, at all. It, it, was, it, about, it was sodomy, wasn't it? It was. You're using the homosexual. You're using the word Sodom yes. to explain the place. Are you, not, are you hearing what I'm saying? Men, men explain. Men, men want to rape who? Like now in Revelation, he says very clearly when he begins the list of the people he's throwing in hell, guess who's the first? It's the homosexual. Let us stop picking the Bible, the part that suits us. That's wrong. If you're going to pick that book and use it, please use all of it. If you put all, for example, the people who identify as same-sex attracted on an island, can I ask this question? How long will that community last? Hello and a warm welcome to this special edition of LNS. My name is Lynn Googie and thank you so much for joining us for yet a conversation that I believe should have happened a long time ago. I do not want to preempt to preempt it, but I do believe that the people I'm here to have these conversations with are able to have one and not a debate. So without further ado, I'm going to let them introduce themselves and then I will read you something. So please go on. All right, so hello everybody. Yeah. My name is Carlyle Oronyambura. I am a mother, I'm an eco-feminist, I am an entrepreneur, and hopefully one day I'll be a meteorologist. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Hi, I'm Desi Hussein. I'm a luxury events designer, peer consultant, and a fashion enthusiast, and a luxury connoisseur. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Karibu sana. Thank you. Yes. She has some luxury. I I lose. I mean, hi. Yeah. Uh, I'm an iterator. I'm a media personality. I'm a mother. That's the most interesting thing in life. And um, I'm a mental health activist and also I'm a human rights activist. Yeah. That's All it. right. Welcome, Anita. Thank you so much. Thank okay. You. Yes. Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Ada Tatu. I am a medical doctor, a counseling psychologist, and also a life coach and a fertility education coach. Um, I'm the founder and director of Wastahili Family Wellness Center. Very passionate about health. I'm very passionate about women and um, ministering to women and uh, young people. And I'm also on the board of Linda Vijana Initiative, which um, hopes to raise the next generation of young people. Yeah. I'm also a, gr a mother and a grandmother. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> So, yes. 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 Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Antonina Aching. Um, I'm a chaplain. Uh, I also serve as a youth worker. I have been for the last 25 years. Um, I am a mother of four amazing little people and uh, truly grateful to be here. I am categorically pro family and pro life. Okay. Yes. Hi everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Daddy Owen. I'm a gospel minister. Uh, I'm a disability activist. Uh, I'm the founder of uh, Malika Disability Foundation. And uh, apart from that, I'm a businessman and uh, the rest uh, I think so many people know about. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, because how? Because how? <laughs> yes, uh, I, I want to read something that you and you you did tweet something, uh, but before I read it, Anita, uh, personally, why are you here? You called me. Yes. I posted. I posted. You called me honestly. Let's yes. me. I posted something because I was. I was. I've stayed away from this argument because I'm very radical and I say things as I think they are. And let me specify what I say. I say my truth. I don't like quoting people and. I was okay with this whole argument. I was like, such is life. You people argue. But then the church came in it, the whole LGBTQ argument. And I was like, hold up, hold up. 
Why is the church getting involved in this? I thought you people are, uh, you're supposed to share love, you know, you teach love, so why are you not showing love? That's when I got involved and I wrote some um, uh, things on Instagram and they create, brought so much traction on my mm -hmm. post. I was so sure it's going to be flagged down, by the way, because mm -hmm. people started getting very vulgar on it, so I blocked off the comments. But then I told people, it doesn't change what I said. That's my opinion. That's my truth. I don't think the church should get involved in this. The same church, I feel like, we have Sodom in church, we have rape in church, we have lies in church, we see all this nonsense online on church. Then you come with the same moral audacity. Who gave you that audacity? Who gave you? Did God leave some power to you enough to come and judge us? I'm sure the Bible somewhere says don't judge. You know? mm -hmm. I'm sure it's Matthew 7 somewhere. Don't, don't judge unless you want to be judged the same way. So when the church got involved, I was like, mm -mm. I've been quiet, but then when the church gets in this, the same church that is quiet, I have never lean, seen the church talk about rape. I have never, had, do you follow a picture, you know, mm -hmm. the things we read there can yeah. make you want to die 10 times in a day, you know. I have never seen the entire country unite for rape and kids, one year old, six months, get raped by their fathers, by the way. I have never seen anyone demonstrate. I have never seen the church say anything. We have Sodom in church. I have never seen the church say anything. But then these two, consent, two consenting adults, having their own life, not disturbing you, not asking you for rent, not asking you for anything, you want to discuss this? And then you, what pissed me off the most is them telling us, oh, it's a Western thing. What do you mean it's a Western thing? Show me something that you use that is not Western. The Bible is Western. As, as she said, our tradition, I'm Kikuyu. Mimi, I'm Demojiro. I am literally Kikuyu. That if I was to say I'm not going to use the Western tradition, I would not have a phone. I would live in the forest. I would not wear clothes. I would not use the telephone. We will not be on a digital platform. But then we cannot take everything Western and, and pick what we don't want. Filter if we everything want. Western is wrong, they kick everything out there. The, the Bible came, the missionaries came in 1840 something or 1864. Then kick them out. Throw everyone, everything Western, throw it out. Throw mm -hmm. it Throw everything out there. But you cannot pick. We want this Western, we don't want this Western. No, take okay. it or leave it. Good. That's it. Oh, and I saw you uh, draft a couple of notes there. What do you think? <laughs> 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 uh, where should I start? Uh -huh. um, I think number one, we are guided by so many things as, a, as who we are, as a people. And uh, for me as a Christian, yeah, I believe in the Bible. I believe what the Bible says, and I believe from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And there are so many things that the Bible has that defines what is truth, and who God is, and why we are created, and why we are here. So if we go back, uh, she mentioned something about uh, the Western. I believe the Bible was there before even we discovered what we call the Western. You understand? It's just because someone brought the message came from the Western. It I mean that the Bible came from the West. The word of truth, which is the word of God, stood there before all these things. It was the first one. It's the first thing that we need to know and understand as human beings. Mm -hmm. That's why we are who we are today. You understand? Okay. So by the virtue, something was, 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 was brought by someone. Mm -hmm. It's the same way, just because you were born and you are told your God is this, or your God is different, your God is, you understand, from whether you face Mount Kenya and all that. It means, of course, there's someone who said about it first. So, she quoted, uh, she said the missionary came. Yeah, the missionary came. You understand? But even them, they received the word. So it means the word was there even before the missionaries. Mm -hmm. And there must be someone, like for me, I'm a gospel musician, I'm a, I'm a minister. I'm still ministering. I, I still find people who don't know the word of God. You understand? So someone cannot say, I just, I don't want things from the real and I come from Ebusanganga village. So from my village, yeah, you can't say I don't want anything from Ebusanga village. I'm just a messenger. I'm just, it's just because I'm the one who has the message. I come from Ebusanga village and now I'm passing the message to you. Mm -hmm. So when they came, and it, even if you, if you read the, the, the history very well about how the missionaries came, the colonizers came and the missionaries came. Unfortunately for, for us Africans, if you go back to the history, at that time, we couldn't separate who is a colonizer, and who is a missionary. a missionary? So any white person who came was bracket was put in one bracket, and they were deemed as 
You understand? There's something called the, 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 the halo effect. The halo effect is more of if you see someone behaving like what you saw before, you always believe all of them behave like that. So if that person comes, he comes with a gun, and the other one came with a Bible, you, it's so hard for you as an African to separate who is who. We know colon, colonizers by then, they didn't do the right thing. They do. For me, I always say that was a very bad moment for Africans. So let's go back to Christianity. For me as a Christian, I say the Bible, uh, the Christians, I'm at the church, should stand firm to what they believe in. And if that's what us as the church believe it's right, we always have all these debates. When you're forming the constitution, you understand? When you're discussing in, even about the constitution, I will go back to the constitution because that constitution, I remember I was the first person who, long time ago, who complained about what we we're about to, to pass. And everyone was like, no, it has my door, door but we'll rectify it later. That re re rectify it later is what has put us in this in problem this, right and in now. this conversation. You understand? Allow me. Yeah. Uh, allow uh, me. Uh, allow me. Uh, okay. um, I'm sorry to correct you. You said the constitution you were told there's my door, door. What my door, door are you referring to? Please be clear. Because if people like us, the LGBT people, standing up and asking for what is rightful, hours, I don't see the maduador. And going back to the church, isn't church one of the places that initiate and say, even the Bible, even the holy book say, love your neighbor or love other people the same way you love yourself? So why is it now that when we've decided to love ourselves, the church is saying, no, it's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand. And like what my colleague had said earlier, when all these things are happening in church, when we hear about rapists and pastors um so submitting young people in charge nobody talks about it just because like people have chose love over hate now is an issue to choose love over hate okay i want i want there's something i wanted to ask nyambura because you said your truth he said we as christians right yeah. so i would want you to react to that but daddy owen mm -hmm. you did post something yeah. on twitter and you said I'm assuming this is the interview you are talking about. Mm -hmm. I have been invited, Kesho, for a live interview to debate with the LGBTQ perverts, right? Mm -hmm. wow. I'm still trying to decipher what will be the footing of this discussion. Yes. Biblically, mm -hmm. it's a sin. Mm -hmm. Biologically, mm -hmm. it's proven to be clap trap. Mm -hmm. Legally, it's a crime. Mm -hmm. Culturally, it's an abomination, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you're saying biblically is proven to be, uh, biblically, it's a sin. But you also say LGBTQ mm -hmm. perverts. Mm -hmm. What makes you think mm -hmm. the people sitting on this side mm -hmm. are perverts? Because mm -hmm. those are your words mm -hmm. and you are on in the public space. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you could um, elaborate that mm -hmm. before Nyambura mm -hmm. can react to we as Christians. Number one, mm -hmm. I for me, I believe it's, a, it's perversion because like I said, according to the Bible, it's a sin. There's no two way about it. Biologically, I've never found, like, let's, let's start with, she, she had a very good example. Mm -hmm. If you're cut right now, ha, huh, we'll get what? XX in her. If I'm cut right now, they'll get what? XY, XY in me. So, I feel like the LGBTQ, I don't know now to make happy, I, what, what, what. It's more about feelings than reality. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. So when it's about feelings, they want to convert feelings to become reality. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't wake up today and say, I feel I'm Elon Musk. I can't. You, you understand? I'm just, oh, no matter what. I'll never become mm -hmm. Elon Musk. You understand? But I can't force you and tell you, if you don't call me Elon Musk today, I'll sue you. If you don't call me Elon Musk today, I have a different opinion. I'm Elon Musk. So it's more about what they feel. And they want us to believe whatever they feel. And I have no issue with <laughs> what someone believes and, and, and feels. Mm -hmm. But my question is, how come when I am against the opinion, you understand? When I'm against the opinion, 
and I'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm going to use maybe bad examples. My opinion can be, if I'm having sex with my wife, I, I, I prefer a certain position. That is something that is happening in my bedroom. That's it. I can't bring it out and force you and tell you, this thing that is happening in my bedroom, no matter how, you understand, it's, it's, it's weird even to discuss it, no matter how, how much I believe about that position is the best, mm -hmm. I want to force you to believe this is the best position for all of you guys to, to, to use. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because it's my preference. Okay. You understand? And it's something that is happening in my bedroom. Let me leave it there. But now, I can't come on social media and start posting and forcing everyone to believe that is the truth. When I come and say, whatever, whatever LGBTQI believes, it's wrong. I'm always flagged. You understand? Yes. I've received like, you understand? Mm -hmm. So many warnings mm -hmm. because of what I say. And for me, I, I, I always use an example and I say, if you guys say it's okay to express yourselves, how come when I'm trying to express my truth, I'm banned? For what purpose? What's the reason why I'm banned? Why am I gagged? You've expressed your flag. You've expressed how you feel. And let me come and say and whatever. express how you Yeah, feel. and I tell you how that is wrong. And like, like you see, like, like here right now, we're debating, we're talking about, we're discussing about it. It's okay. But if this thing was happening on Instagram right now, your page will be taken down. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Nyambura. Maybe, what do you think about what all So let's just begin with, number one, the first thing you just said when you've talked about queer people is perversion, and then you went to explain about how your bedroom looks like. Who's the pervert in the situation? I was saying, I'm giving an mm -hmm. example. What was that your first example? Why was that your first example? Because there's I, so I was, many examples you can give. I was trying to show you how this thing is a perversion to it. Because I've given, mm -hmm. and I say, and I, I, I gave a disclaimer, and I say, I want to use something that is very radical because yes. I feel it's the same way they want to use the perversion to bring it to us. So I was like, for once, I'm, I'm a gospel musician and I gave a disclaimer before mm. I said it. Mm. Before I said it, I said it. I want to use a weird example <coughs> because it's weird. So you think LGBTQIA plus is weird? But of course. Okay. So I'll start by saying also, I found out I was queer when I was not found out. Actually, <laughs> my family outed me to me. They were like, you're so weird, you're so... I didn't even know what that was, right? So, in that instance, I was a child, right? So in that instance, I hid, like, I hid it to myself for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was... It's a whole thing, it's a personal thing, but... Personally, I didn't believe in coming out because I still don't believe in coming out because number one, it was making me unsafe, and then number two, whose business is it except my own, right? So... The reality he's talking about is a society where we have normalized violence to the point where they believe that paying people to come attack us is something noble, right? So we as Christians, let me respond to we as Christians first. We as Christians, Christianity as a boat is everything you talked about, how colonization came. That's a lie. Let's just start there. That's a lie. Well, Colonialism, yeah. yes. Well, let me, lie. I'm explaining why. Colonialism came to us on the Christianity boat. Christianity was a weapon used to wield our traditions against us. Let me give you a story first, for example. Do you know the story of Wainga Kwa Kudiga Shoka? Ever heard that song? Wainga let me tell you for fun. Wainga was a medicine man. He was a medicine man for the traditional Kikuyu people, right? Now, Wainka was a person everybody revered because medicine men in our time was the people who you came to for every single thing that you need. So how our treatment was, you from head to toe, right? That was our way of healing us. Now when the white man came, he was like, Ay, these traditions of theirs are so strong. And they identified this medicine man is the person who is the central of where their connectedness is. This is the person who heals them. So they came and brought us something like smallpox. I don't remember the exact disease it was, but it was something that looked like smallpox. They, uh, that was a disease for them. It had never come to our borders. But when we got, they got here, we infected. But we have no idea what's happening. We have no clue. Now, when Wainga is treating us, he also has no idea what he's doing. So there's no, nothing that's working. So the white man knows this. So what he did, he came, he went to Wainga. He's like, he came and see the compound where Wainga is. 
he positioned himself next door. See, it may, because us were very welcoming, we were very, you know, cordial people. We, we don't think anything is a threat because we are not threatening. Mm -hmm. We were very um, diplomatic about our existence. So when he packed his vituko uko viragozake, he was like, ah, wenga wasaidi, come, come to my house, I'll treat you. No kitoko uko, you will be clean. That's what the song says. You will be washed clean and you will be in need of your sins, uh, something of that nature. Right? It was because ukitoka huko una yomo huku toka kichwa paka migu and you're dressed in their western clothes. So, after a while, it became, hey, this disease, this is the only person who can heal it. Wainga is useless. So they frushed him from there. Mm -hmm. So now who's the healer? The white person. So that is the tool that they used. Christianity now became the weapon they used. So, at the end of the day, when when I say we as Christians, I take that as a foreign concept because the Christianity that was brought to me was a weapon that was used to bash me. And that's what you're still doing to this day. You are beating me with a weapon that is not even yours for, for your own design. For, because the, the reality you're trying to defend is the, the reality of violence where there is no self-determination. The family unit is what you're defending. What is the family unit? Where children are raped, where they're murdered, where Isikimia needs to exist because the government will not do their job. They will not do anything. They'll tell you to pray. Okay. Your taxes are going... They will tell you, I yes. mean, so, Antonio, it does not, just, that it does not make sense. Can, yeah, just, you are going in, but she has something. Oh, Maybe, yes, yes and yes. then daddy will... Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, and I'm noticing the emotions mm -hmm. that are going up. Yeah. And um, there, there's something that Dr. Tari had talked about before we began, about watching out to make sure that our emotions are not heightened because then we will not be able to effectively communicate. Nevertheless, having said that, the reality of this conversation, most of us come into it from a broken place. And anyway, which human being is not broken? Not broken Everyone parents. has their aspects of brokenness. Yes. So that like now, for example, what she has shared, Nyambura, right? Yes. She, you, you can tell there's hurt, there's brokenness, and especially it happened for her from the little that she has shared from her family, you know, when she was growing up, when she mentioned she was a child, mm -hmm. okay? And many of us, most of the uh, uh, realities we have to deal with when we are grown mm -hmm. come from a place of brokenness while we are children. Why? Because many times, Though that space that was supposed to be the safe space for us wasn't safe, okay? So we must appreciate brokenness, but also be able to re pursue objectivity where we can be able to identify that's the brokenness. That brokenness was caused by other broken people because in an ideal reality, a place should be safe. And some of us actually, if everyone was to talk, tell their stories, there are some of us who have come from very safe places, they were loved, they were appreciated, they were affirmed, daddy was always at home. And, and that's the reality of some people, but it's not the reality of all people. But as human beings, there is something in us that aspires towards the ideal, aspires, pursues towards. So that even if I'm coming from a place of brokenness, can I leave a better heritage for my own? Like for example, I'm coming into this conversation as a broken woman. What is my brokenness? My brokenness is I came to realize much later that I was part of a research somewhere that was out to sterilize women in my space called Africa, okay? What is my story? I want to get babies. I love children. I'm trying to get them. I can't get them. I am miscarrying one. I am miscarrying two. I am miscarrying three. And I'm thinking, eh, eh, why now? What is not happening? I will go to prayer because as an African, we know that there is a God, a supreme being, not a thing, a supreme being. And so I will knock doors for prayer. It's not working. What's happening to me? I'm getting babies. I can tell I'm pregnant. I go for the uh, test, the scans. Yeah, you're pregnant, but then you lose it. Then you lose it. Much later, I come to realize, wait, there is a conversation behind the scenes that Antonina, you have no clue about. What is that about? Depopulation. There are people somewhere who have decided, eh, Africa, too many people. Bring the numbers down. Mm. What are the strategies? Abortion is one. Contraceptives is another. Sterilization is a third. 
Now, I can avoid abortion by choice because it is a choice people make. But I went to a health facility trusting that they will take care of me. This health facility is bona fide because it's government. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm given a job. Later, I will come to discover the job that you received, not once, not twice, has made your body reject the babies you're getting. I didn't know that. So by the time I'm realizing this, I'm wounded. I'm broken. Kwanzaa, I'm angry with God. Why are you giving me babies and taking them? Because I'm a religious person. I'm a Christian. Okay? But fast forward, I come to realize, oh, in the 1960s, some people came together, conjured up a strategy that they called the sexual, now we call the sexual revolution strategy. The three strategies that they were pursuing, number one is depopulation, number two is divorce, number three is the gender ideology. So hapa kwa hii ya kwanza, depopulation, patikana. Okay? When I discover that, first of all, I'm in shock. Like, how can anybody in their right mind do that? Because all I want is to have babies carry them. Thankfully, thankfully, and I thank God because in this country, there are people who pursue their careers for good in the medical field. Mm -hmm. So a doctor just happened to see me pregnant and then wasn't pregnant and asked me, what happened? I was like, yeah, this is what has been happening to me. And I was like, really? Come. I go, I'm tested. I am 90 plus positive to that, uh, uh, that thing that makes my body reject pregnancy. And so I have to be put on medication. Thankfully, I have, I have four kids, the ones that I talked about, because each of them is a story. That is the place where I'm coming into this conversation. Okay. And what I want to help us understand is sometimes when you are dealing with a situation without stepping back to understand what's the big picture, what is really happening? Because is it true that lesbians have been there, homosexuals have been there? Um, they have been there. Yeah. The intersex have been there. Okay, so why is it right now there's a concern that is coming up from different quarters? Maybe if we step back, then we'll be able to pinpoint and say, okay, this is where it's at. And when we understand where it's at, when also we understand that this is a sinister agenda by some people, okay, then we will stop back and say, okay, so what do we need to do? Because like now from in my space where I work for the last 20 plus years, I have dealt with broken girls and boys who come and say, I'm attracted mm -hmm. to a person of the same sex. Okay. And we sit and talk. And that is conversion the first therapy. thing that, we that's the first conversion thing. Therapy. Let me finish. The first thing that we have to appreciate, and I will be bringing out two, just two main points. That there are people who are in this conversation who are hurting and very broken. They are crying because there are tears people don't know about. And I have listened to people who talk about they were raped by a significant, many times, in fact, many times, it's usually an uncle, same sex. It's usually a house girl, same sex, you get. So that by the time someone is actually beginning to say, I feel attracted to, if you go back to their stories, you will find brokenness. Yeah. How do we approach such? We must come with compassion. And that is why I want to bring about the conversation about church. Because right now, like from what has gone afore in this, in this conversation, there's a reaction towards church. But I want to also say that it's not just church. We've seen Muslims doing a march, Religion. you know? We, we've seen different people coming out and saying, uh-uh. Even from an African perspective, this is not us as a people, okay? So let's not bash church, okay? Church has its role, mm -hmm. and you cannot ignore church. And about even Christianity, Christianity, when you look at it from the perspective of colonialism, you need Jews John Mark was one of the disciples, mm -hmm. just a little bit, because I've done theology. John Mark was, a, uh, was a, uh, one of the uh, disciples of Jesus was amongst the first people who came to Northern Africa and brought the gospel. The Ethiopian eunuch that we meet in the book of Acts, that is a black man like you and I. 
So hii story ya juzi ya colonizers na missionaries hiyo ni story ya juzi sana because if you trace the 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 Ethiopian eunuch he was a high government official in the queen's government of Candis. Candis ruled the whole part of northern Ethiopia even part of Kenya. Okay? This was all her domain. When the man came he brought good news. That good news spread like wildfire. So when we are also Uh, responding let's not respond without understanding let's step back because when we step back then we'll be able to see where has the confusion come if there are people who literally sat down in the 1960s came up with these three strategies is it then a wonder that we can see so much funding for divorce so much funding for depopulation so much funding for gender ideology so i am coming into this and saying I know what heart can do and heart can blind you. It can make you so bitter, it can make you unable even to listen to ration. Okay. But if you step back, there is hope. There is healing. So we will not even throw the whole church. We will say, "Okay, so let's hear what the church is saying." What is the church saying? The church is not saying anything new. In 2010, the church marched and said, "Ah uh-uh. ah Our lawyers our professionals have scrutinized this document and they have seen what he he was referring to as madodo we have seen vipengele that's the word i i, I came across because we were doing civic education in swahili kuna vipengele pale what are the vipengele yeah, what are that are causes yes, yes. there are causes yeah, yeah. what are the causes yes we want to hear the causes yes guys what are the causes even me i really want to know what are these causes <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm laughing. You know, I'm laughing. I love I love I love how you preach, honestly. It's yes. powerful. But then, and you try not to bring the rest into this and it's also very powerful, to be very honest. I believe everybody has their truth. I'm spiritual, you have no idea. I told her I woke up and prayed and I told God, I I offend you. My mom she prays says, I offend you by thought and by word a lot. I'm human. That's expected, you know. But I try not to, honestly. I I am very spiritual. But then when I prayed in the morning I told God I want to have this conversation in a way that we can come to an agreement or a non agreement without fighting you know because my question here today is I funny enough we are all entitled to an opinion but it should end there don't you think because we can quote the bible if you want I read the bible like a story book because I believe it should teach us you know and I love the old testament because it's deep It's 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 where it all started. She says she's I'm very kikuyu. My dad is those men who will never enter church. He's that he's traditional. But then I read the Bible and and I try to explain to him is like no my grandfather was a pastor. I know the Bible so well. But then when you read the Bible in length and in depth and you try to understand it, you understand that it's all about love. Why even if we're trying to say you don't believe in LGBT which is your right and entitlement what gives you the right to decide they don't have a right because God didn't give anyone that right that I'm sure of you know let me finish he didn't he didn't give anybody the right to decide for him his decision when you go to heaven I'm telling you sito lizo makosa alin ati anita simama hapo nikusomea makosa alin why he gave me when he gave us a choice between good and bad he gave us all of us okay. he didn't give you and take it away from me so if everybody has a choice why are their choices so wrong according to you because we were to quote the bible he quoted leviticus it's leviticus 20, 20 yeah where, where it says uh, no man should engage in homosexuality let me ask according to the same bible why have they not talked about lesbianism then why have they not talked about the new ones i've had is a sexual no idea what that is but i'm sure it's part of it my point is Why why did they not then detail all of it then? Because that picking that one point is my problem. In the same Bible if you're going to follow the Leviticus all of it according to what it says, then how many parts are we following? How many parts of Leviticus do we even follow? How many parts are we following? Let me finish later. Yes. Let us stop picking the Bible the part that suits us. That's wrong. If you're going to pick that book and use it, please use all of it. But don't pick the part that suits you. Today the church is going to be like Leviticus or oh, this one 20 1928 don't put tattoos don't don't i know the whole bible literally so let's use all of it let's just not pick the part that suits us you have a problem with them that's okay you don't agree with them that's your right but what gives you the right to dictate they should be condemned they have no right to form associations they have no right to live what gives you the right to decide who lives or dies they have right to be beaten they have right not to exist who gives us that right yes. 
as a normal human being to dictate what happens to another human okay, being. Okay, I, I want to move to Darcy and Edda, but I want to give her time to, to finish and you are finishing <laughs> something also. I'm really interested in the Vipengele because yes. that's what mm. it, you, it has come twice. Yeah. Madoa Doa and, and Vipengele. Vipengele. <laughs> but I'm really, you said you are doing the whole civic education. Yeah. I'm interested to know what are these Vipengele, mm -hmm. what are the Madoa Doas, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. in connection mm -hmm. to the LGBTQ IE plus community. Very good. Uh, allow me yes. kindly because she asked a very direct question yeah. and it was directed to what I had uh, okay. talked about yes. and the whole question of what gives me right. And like I mentioned here, I am, I am not just speaking for me, I'm a Christian. In fact, I'm a gospel minister. I am a pastor in a local assembly and a chaplain for that matter. So, and I appreciate the fact that you say you have read the Bible. Yeah. That very chapter that he talks about, you will be surprised that the entire chapter is about sex. I know, I've read all of it. So when you're talking yeah. about just men and asking why didn't they talk about lesbianism, it's right there. Because it actually says neither should women ban for passion with other women and one. even sleep with one another. Yeah. So if you have read the Bible, it says there very clearly. And probably the question will be, if, if the question is who gives us the right? Mm -hmm. As Christians who gives the right is God. Okay, as Africans, who gives the right? It's God, because Africans believe in the supreme being who gives direction, who gives standards. The one who we sing about, oh God of all creation, he created the sea and says, this is the boundary for the sea, don't cross. Okay, he creates wild animals, he creates, and for every creature, he says, this is what you are to do, mm -hmm. this is what you are not supposed to do. So as far as the standard setter is concerned, it is God himself. So he he and gave so, you power. Let, let me so he gave you power though. Allow me. You know, when <laughs> you were speaking, we were... <laughs> we said, we have <laughs> we a few guidelines here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Because that, of course, scatters yes. uh, the, the, the line of thought. Process. Yes. Yes. So uh, uh, as to the question of who gives the right, it is the one who alone has the right. It is God himself. And it is God who ordered a man and a woman, not Adam and Steve, Adam and Eve, from the Christian perspective. And uh, uh, the, the, the Agekoyo will have theirs. Like me, I mentioned Amache, okay? Our, our Luo people have theirs. That God, there's a reason why he put together male and female and ordered that this is how things are supposed to be done. So, Anytime there is a going against what we call the natural order, that natural order is not from us. It is from the way he has designated things to be. So that, for example, I have had to deal with walking through a young man who, was, who has been living in that reality of homosexuality and has to be in diapers at 16. Okay, why? Because the unknown space as an organ wasn't supposed to be entered. All right, but something has gone wrong he has been predisposed to a certain reality, okay? That reality has caused him harm. Okay, I'm It is just like rape. Yes. A, a woman can be raped by a man and she's perforated. Allow me before I also lose my thought process yes. because I have some few questions and I would want Darcy Onyambura to answer. Antonia speaks about brokenness and heart. Right, and this was not supposed to happen. And she's also highly quoting Christianity, like religion, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. But we are also coming, uh, I'm, I'm watching you and you don't believe in any of this. You don't believe in Christianity. I, I'm just thinking out loud. She doesn't believe in Christianity. She doesn't believe in your God. Your God is not her God, maybe. So what, what would you want to say about it? And is it true that maybe, maybe the people in the LGBTQ community, we have a higher percentage of them who are broken and they are trying to make their feelings, as he said, a reality. Let's start with that feelings part. Yes. So there's this thing men like to say, feelings, logic. It's not that beautiful thing they like to say. Yes. Use your logic, not your feelings. You, you're a human being. So as a mental health activist, you'll back me up on this. The powerhouse of the human brain is your hormones. And your hormones manufacture your 
emotions, right? So that's literally the powerhouse of your body. Mm. So if you are talking to somebody and they're not reacting as a human being, which is through your emotions, you're basically talking to a, uh, um, a stone. Not a stone, the thing that they are projecting themselves to be because mm. they're not being themselves. Mm -hmm. You're speaking as a pastor, you're speaking as an advocate for the church. You are there. Soldier, strongest soldier. I do not know who a Ching is. I have not had a Ching, except when you shared your personal story. That's the only time I have seen a Ching, right? At this point, you cannot tell me this objective, beautiful thing that is attacking my person who's subjective. I cannot take my body, my physical self outside everything you're saying because it's coming to me, my body, my feelings, my ears are hearing what you're saying. Everything you're saying to me is reminding me of my conversion therapy and. <laughs> Hey, anyway, <laughs> hey, what's that, what's that, what's that? Mm -hmm. Something else you asked about. Yes, are you broken? Do you think? Everybody you... is broken. Mm -hmm. Let me just begin by that. Yes. Trauma begets trauma. This system, let me now tell you, I have taken, realizing I was different from a young age, and my difference is not just my queerness. I have ADHD, I have autism, I am disabled myself. So, all these beautiful things helped me sit back and realize, okay, this is not just me. There has to be something above me that is controlling all these things that are making me feel all these things. And that thing is the system we live in. This system, because when you talk about the Bible, the only words that came from God were the Ten Commandments and the Beatitudes. Do you know what the Beatitudes are? Many people don't even know. It's in Matthew chapter 5. So, God's commandments are do not kill, do not persecute, do not covet, do not all these beautiful things. Only 10 words from his mouth straight. Everything else is hearsay. God told me to tell you. God told me to tell you. Now, as a messenger, you have your own bias. As a person, you have your own pain, your own brokenness. Like I said, every system we exist in is, is a violent system. Every single one. So you who has been broken by this system or this thing, you are a Christian who are being persecuted over here behind, and then you come with all your biases, and then you come and you sit down with it. Honestly speaking, are you not speaking from your brokenness as well, even if you're the biggest, strongest soldier for this beautiful religion that you're championing for? right so this system that is breaking all of us is called capitalism it's called patriarchy it's called colonialism we have done none of this work to interrogate all of these systems that are carried in our bodies in our dna our ancestors lived through all these beautiful things we are carrying it right now but your pain has been directed to the church and your church has become your haven and that's perfectly fine which is your prerogative we had no choice and I understand that now when you're in that haven you have this community and that's who we are as human beings to live in a community so if i'm in this beautiful community and any slight chance of me being different will make this community throw me out period what will i do i will self-preserve so when i'm coming from that brokenness this this system called because let me explain something something called patriarchy this is the system we exist in where we have the exaltation of one we ex number one we believe that there's two genders there is 27 genders understand that and no peace there is more than that, actually. So at the end of the day, what's your knowledge? It is limited to what you know and the circles you live in. That reality is yours alone. It is not for everybody, right? Okay. So when we have that existence of knowing that this system called patriarchy, it has very many prongs, very many things that it uses to enforce itself. It has religion that is as its biggest, biggest soldier. That is the number one fighting soldier, religion. Sexism, this thing of talking about... Um, you have two genders in Kukata, X, 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 Y. That is sexism. Because you ask assigning people and, and saying at you, oh, testosterone is for men, testosterone is for men. Stop gendering hormones for one. Hormones are in everybody's body. In different degrees, in different variations, of course, yes. That is subjective. That's why we come back to subjectivity. When you are objective about it, human bodies cannot be sexualized unless you purpose to do it right so sexism is another thing then you come and talk to us about colonialism that was another big run running but for everybody else to put us because africans were very um, what is it called we loved our even if your person is different we will not kick you out we will not kill you we will come and hold you as a people and understand and if this difference is so different we will create for you your own space to exist outside what we believe in that is who we were 
but we came and we were given this beautiful foreign thing that we are now championing so hard against other human beings, against your own people. Do you understand the level of going against the Bible that you're doing? Do you, I, okay, I don't I, think, I, yes. no, I don't think you guys have fully, grasped. you have not fully grasped the things you're doing. You have not grasped it. The number of, you have not grasped okay, it. Okay, all right. Have have hold it, hold it right there, Nyambura, before that you when you react. And Doc, I love that you are observing all this because I'm highly, I, I, I want to understand what it is that you are drafting down so that you are able to help us navigate some of this, right? But Darcy, when you are, when we started, you said the moment we decide to love ourselves and accept ourselves, that's when you want to come and tell us that we shouldn't. Have you always not loved yourself? And what is it about even the apex ruling that makes you now feel like there's some sort of security in how you can be able to move around? Um, I've always loved myself. Mm -hmm. It's just that the one thing that I grew up, I'm not Christian, I'm Muslim. Yes. And I grew up in a Muslim family. And um, there are a lot of things that we are told, this is not the right way of doing things. This is not the right way of doing this. This is not the right way of doing this. But then when you look back at the community, the people who are actually making that noise are the same people who are doing worse what? things than what we are doing. <laughs> and um, I've, uh, one of the things that I have realized in life is most people project what they fear on themselves on other people. I'm not pointing fingers on anybody, but that's the, the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. So if I fear that the LGBTQ people, we are very talented, we are very smart, we are so intelligent. We do what most people want to do. We are gifted. It comes naturally. naturally. Mm -hmm. It comes naturally. I'm sure the guys, most of the guys who are seated on the other side have worked with people or are living with people who are the LGBT people and these are the people who are running shit for them. <laughs> we do so much. Mm -hmm. We're not asking for much. The world is not asking for much. What as Darcy, what are you asking from the Kenya community? I'm just asking them to be we are not aliens. We are people who they've been living with. And it's just, we just want to be given that freedom of choice, freedom of speech. Like, we should not live in fear. I hold we it. live in a generation yes. that most of the LGBTQ people are told, you're not worth this, you're not worth that. And, and I don't think it's the right way to live. Mm -hmm. Nyambura, I'm coming to you. Daddy Owen, yeah. he said, he just wants to exist peacefully. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with what he's asking from you as a brother? Number one, uh, I always say this. I hate the sin. I don't hate the sinner. Sin exists. We found it here. We'll die all of us and leave it here. You understand? Sin is here. Sin came through the world. Through one man. That's what the Bible tells us. So, Sin exists. It's, it's in our environment. It's everywhere. But the sinner has a chance. I can talk to them. I can preach to them. And they can change their lives. That's why I always say, even in my post, I always say, I don't hate the, sin I don't hate the sinner. I hate the sin. I don't hate a person. I can't hate a person. That's not for me to hate anyone. But I call out the sin. And when there's a sin, you have, it has to be called out. And most people, I remember every now and then so, someone used to tell me, so that you're in, the way you, you, you've portrayed them, or you've written what you've written and all that, in your situation, what would Jesus do? And they always use the example of the adulterous woman. The worst thing is, eh, no one quotes the last, the last statement Jesus said in that whole story. Jesus said, go and don't Sin no more. So the other, see, the other, the other uh, story that was happening there when the men came with the stones and you understand, it was dramatic, of course, it was very dramatic, and that's what everyone talks about. But the last line, it means even Jesus knows, I love you. You're an adulterous woman. I love you, but I'll call out your sin 
and I'll condemn the sin. Do you think what you are doing is sinful? No. No. No human being is illegal. No human being is a sin. Like you said. When, when you're talking about sins, like, Daddy Owen, you want to tell me you are a saint you've never seen in your entire life. And I was going to my point <laughs> before she cut me short. Cool. Even for me, mm. I'm a gospel artist. Yes. Mm. We are condemned. Mm. People call us out mm -hmm. every now and then. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm. And at the end of the day, you listen to what they are saying and you're like, hey, there's a moment Eric Komodi called us out and, mm. and he was like, you guys do this. You understand? Mm. And I did an interview with Eric mm. after that. And I said, of course, there are things you've mentioned mm -hmm. which we know mm -hmm. it's happening. Mm -hmm. And even for me, if I see someone doing something that I know is wrong, I always talk to them. Mm -hmm. And there are people who talk to me mm -hmm. and tell me, hey, that you're in. here, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. You can't be doing this. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So as a gospel minister, mm -hmm. as a, a person of interest, mm -hmm. I always go back and say, but they're here, I did it wrong. Mm -hmm. And I have a chance to repent. Mm -hmm. And do it right. And that's what I'm calling out for. Because for me, the issue, and I, I want to make it very clear, the issue is the sin, not the sinner. Okay. Bro, I have nothing what, against what, you. What, what my question is would be to, to both of you, what has the LGBT community done that is so sinful to you guys that you're not happy about? I call it ABC. For me, so you have no, no, no problem. Let's, no, let's, so hold do on, you guys. have a problem? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I want a clear answer yeah. to that question. Yeah. What has the LGBTQ done? Back. That's no, what I'm saying. Just I'm going give to give me a point. Yes. My first statement, mm. my first statement on Twitter and Instagram was why did the Supreme Court allow this to, ha to, to happen? happen. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm. Because if they allow it to happen, it means even bandits can form an association. Because, let me give an example. Today, listen, today, if I go to the band, if I go to Pokot right now, and I sit down with those Marakwets and the Pokots, and they start giving me their reasons, why they are fighting for their cattle and all that, trust me, they'll convince you. It's colonialism. So Anita says she wants to support you. Every time I try to talk. Part of a conversation, yeah. there's going to be sarcasm, there's going to be laughter. And that is part of no. a conversation. Before, We're not here to fight yeah. anyone. Now, and nobody is here to fight anyone, yes, right? Owen, so, go on. and I mentioned, yes. if, if you go to the bandits today, mm. they'll give you reasons. Mm. They'll give you, but they, they'll give you serious. I, 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 I travel to those regions, yeah? to pick out kids who are living in disability yes. and try to help them. Yeah? Yeah. So if you go there and that father tries to convince you why they don't want their kid to go to school, yeah. it's a very different story by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a very different conversation. And they so, believe they are right. They believe they are right. Okay. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So bandits today can be allowed mm -hmm. to form an organization, to form an NGO, mm -hmm. and it can be registered. Mm -hmm. Drug dealers can come to, today and form an organization and meet and you understand? Be registered as an NGO. Mm. Terrorists can go and form an organization and meet. Mm. The point is, when we ask, we were told, this thing, it's a crime. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. It's a crime. But we can't deny them the right to association. association. You understand? So that point to my point. When I called the I called the bandits out, I called the terrorists out. I was calling everyone out. Mm -hmm. I didn't just pick on the LGBTQ. That, that's my point. Mm -hmm. I called everyone out yes. because my point is we are going back to protect our posterity, mm -hmm. our foundation, our future, our kids, and all that. Because I've gone to schools, I've gone to high schools. You understand? Most of the LGBTQ something something, mm. the formation or the breeding place is the high schools. Mm. And if you ask these kids, most of them, 
they'll tell you someone whispered something in their ear. And that's how it started. Mm -hmm. So it means the same way if they are given the opportunity, anyone can be given an opportunity to form an association, they can create a narrative. Mm -hmm. And the moment they create that narrative, it will be very hard. You have to nip it at the bud. Mm -hmm. Yes. My, my, my question is still, like you've not given your final answer. Do you have a problem with the LGBT community personally? Like I said, my first statement, I called out everyone. Mm. You understand? Yeah. From bandits, to terrorists, to the LGBTQ. To the LGBTQ. So it means, mm. when we see a scene, we you call will it call out. it by name. Yeah, we okay. call it out. LGBTQ. Yes. So call, calling, if, calling it by name is okay. Yes. I believe we are all sinners, mm -hmm. and I believe everybody has their own sin behind everything that they do. See, you've still not answered the question. The mm -hmm. question is, do you have a problem with people like me? I have a problem mm. with LGBTQ. Yes. I have a problem with bandits. Okay. I have a problem with We're terrorists. Not bandits. Okay, hold on, guys. What? I'm uh -huh. giving you facts. He's yes. giving his facts. Yes. Okay. So, so, for me, the guys, we're the... talking about okay. if, you see, sin is the word. Mm. Or let's say crime. Okay. Let's go back to crime. Mm. If something is crime, the, there's so much in that. Mm. Killing is in a crime. Okay. Raping is a crime. You understand? Sure. All these things can be yeah. classified as crime. Yeah. So you can't you can't come and pick and say, mm -hmm. no, do you have a problem yeah. with rapists? Yeah. I have a problem mm -hmm. with crime. Okay. That's what I'm calling out. Okay. If it's a crime, it's a crime. Okay, okay. So the specifications now mm -hmm. it's law to define yeah. this law is against uh, rape is against, uh, you understand, murder and all that. Yeah. Okay. But for me, I'm calling out, if it's a crime, this is a crime. Okay, okay. all right. You have, have, you have friends who um, do skits and play roles of women, and they're big celebrities like yourself. Have you ever had a sit down with them and ask them why they do that? Okay, this is the point. There are some people like oh, it's all oh, it's just covered in the name Listen. of uh, comedy and stardom and everything. Or oh, there's a there's a whole situation behind that they don't want. They're trying to bring it out, but then they've not had the opportunity to bring it out. And my post, I was very clear. I said I love everyone, mm -hmm. and if anyone can come and we have this discussion, I'm open. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'll, even if you if you read the tweet I, I tweeted yesterday. Yes. Beneath there, I say, eh? some people say, don't even go there. Mm. Don't even waste your time to mm. go and listen to talk to these guys. Mm -hmm. That's what people say. And I was, I was like, no, I'm a Christian. I preach love. Mm. You do? Yeah. Wow. I'm a, I'm a Christian. What makes I you doubt he, he and does? I, I'm, I'm here to say at the end of the day, I, and that was the first statement. Yeah, this, yes. this second session, yes. I say, I don't hate anyone. I hate the scene. Okay, okay, hold hold everyone, hold on. Nyambura, one second. What makes you doubt he's preaching First love? Before, 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 before Nyambura yes, speak, like, I, I feel like she's just here. And she, she, don't worry, she, she will say something. <laughs> yeah. She will say something. I don't believe in interrupting. No, she does I'm not. She does not. Yeah. From that she generation. will. Okay. What makes you think what he's preaching now is not love? It's not love. What but, is but, it? Uh, he went on Twitter and called us perverts. He didn't take time to learn that there was going to be... Um, Edda on the panel, right? So anybody who sees this video before they even listen, they're going to assume everybody said he is a pervert, right? That a pervert is a no. Let me let me point. let me finish my, my statement. You said you don't want to be distracted. Mm -hmm. I read he she read that tweet and I was offended for one reason. First of all, I'm straight, but then I defend these people because since the first time I had a gay person, I think I was in high school and it was an uncle to my friend, and I swear to God it was a village thing, and I almost fainted. But then I didn't see anything different about him because he was still uncle. He's still he's still uncle. He's alive. It was weird growing up, then I came, worked with people, you hear it maybe four years after working with them. It doesn't change anything. It's the same person you love, same person you hug at work, same person you work with. So for me, their sexuality never affected how I looked at them as a person. Mm. But then you went on Twitter, on, you see social media is powerful. You have so many followers on social media. They follow you like a cult. That's the problem with social media following. They believe you. What you say is the gospel to them. So when you go and tell them you're going to sit with a sitting with perverts who support the LGBT, already the person who's going to watch this from your social media is going to think I'm a pervert. A pervert is a really bad word for someone like me who's a mother to a teenager. It's a really bad word, to be very honest, because a pervert is it's a bad word. So for me, I'm already offended by that tweet, to be very honest, because I'm not a pervert. And I'm here fighting for the basic right of everybody, to be honest, because 
We have so many of these people in our society and she said something so deep. Some of these people are so broken and they come from so much heart. If you had my story, you would not believe I'm here. Lynn has interviewed me and everybody comes from so much brokenness that you try to make sense of your truth. You try to evolve into something different. The most important thing you can give is love and love should be unconditional. You should not give love with conditions. I'm going to love you if you do this. It's like our kids. I can't tell my kid if you break the tablet, then I won't love you next week. I will love my kids to death for as long as I can, for as long as I have life in me. So when you say you're giving love, you're spreading love. I have been on radio for nine years on a microphone. I have listened to some of the most... I had an interview once that broke me down on air because a girl was being raped by the dad. And she called me and said, Anita, I'm going to kill myself. I had no right to judge anyone in that situation. All I did was help. I have seen the worst of society. I've seen the good, the bad, and the terrible. And the one thing it has taught me, I have no right in my capacity as a human being to judge or pass judgment or even to pass hate. I believe I love everybody equally because it's not my place. And I remind myself every day, it's not my place. When you wrote on your social media that people who are homosexual, the Bible says they should be stoned to death. That's what the Bible says, yes. It's actually what the Bible says. But then if we take every sin that the Bible says people should be killed for, we would not have humanity at all because we have sinned and we sin and we will continue to sin. But then you have to remember when you say it, the ripple effects that you and someone read it and took it and they will see homosexual and stone them. You get me? So our life will be lost. I believe it's not up to us. God gives and takes, but it's not up to us to poke it and see, let's tempt if we can take when I do this. It's, it's, it's where we draw our opinions and our rights, and that's how I feel. Thank you, Anita. I want to go to Antonia and then Nyambura, because I want Eda to be able to give us an overview yeah. of where we've reached already in yeah. this conversation. So Nyambura, and then Antonia, and then Doc. Okay, so I'll speak on something he spoke about high school. Yeah, And I said I knew when I was very young. So let me tell you for free, when, when, okay, let me just ask this as a question. When is uh, a human being learning of their sexuality? When do they learn it? When does it start to manifest? Is it not in your teenagehood? Right? So queer people, you need to stop taking, it's not an idea. Queer people are people. Queerness is not an idea. That is what the, the people who are in charge, the people who want the systems to exist as they are for their benefit. Because even you, trust me, you're not the benefits, beneficiary. At the end of the day, you are just a simple cog in the wheel. So at the end of the day, when you tell children who are prepubescent that they are sins, you're telling a child this, how do you think they will view themselves as they're growing up? Because that's your formative years, how will they view themselves as they're growing up? As you're telling them their sins, and then you are weaponizing the school, beat these children, convert them, give them, because my conversion, let me give you a bit of, a snippet of what happened to me. I went into that room. This was not even a therapist. That was the first of the very many therapists I have been to who have done more harm than good. They have reversed everything I had done for myself. So the first thing this man did, he was a pastor, a very beautiful pastor. I didn't know that then. The first thing he does, he goes into his wardrobe, up on Dani. You know what he removes from me? A magazine, a porn magazine. I have never even seen my own body. But that man opened the magazine like this. I ran out of that room screaming. I am a child. I ran out of that room screaming. Because who, who does that? Who in their right mind? shows a 12-year-old girl a full-fledged vagina and a full-fledged... What is wrong with you? Is your head not clicking to tell you this is a child? You are actually molesting them in this action that you're doing, in this thing that you're telling them they are not human enough to fit in your society, and then acting like it is such a big thing. You know, the thing that people are keeping saying is you're shoving this in our face. It is not our responsibility to educate you. You have the internet. You have all these things at the end of the day. This is the thing that is bringing us out to your faces. Now, you're, you say that your society is degraded. It's because the internet is creating a village of the world. Everything you are seeing, it, every, everything is on your hand like this. If you want to see the, the dark web porn, you will see it on your hand right now if you want. Right? So you 
being in your own cocoon, never ever meeting people who are queer, never ever seeing or witnessing anything outside of your reality is not you, anyone's responsibility but your own. So you saying that you are shoving it in your face is because you have not done the work, you have not gone to look. And then you do in-depth research in a situation where you're looking at the people who confirm your bias because we're always looking to confirm our bias as human beings. You will look for the people who will confirm your bias and the people who will dissent from your bias, right? So when you look at those two, you have critical thinking. Now that's the one thing we have lost as an education system. We have no critical thinking skills. And that is where we have, we can sit here and say, I am a whole person in power in Senate, in a government, and I will weaponize this thing and I will use it as a scapegoat. And I will pay people to do what I want because that is your personal, personal vendetta against queer people, for example. So you saying, and and so let me go back to the high school thing. So high school, when you come back to talking about children, now when you give, do that to a child, yeah? Because for me, nobody ever, ever I, I told you I have ADHD and autism. I do not like people. I run away from people. I was a person who used to go hang out in the hang lines alone myself. In the corner. Teachers used to understand me because I used to hang out in a corner alone. Nobody talked to me. Nobody talked. I used to be bullied so badly. And it's because I'm a child who is aware of myself. So when you go to a high school, when you're learning your uh, sexuality at the end of the day, you're a teenager, yeah? The, the, the first thing that you will do, and I'm not going to say this as a, <laughs> let me just say it. The first thing teenagers do will reach for the person who's right next to them. Literally, that is what teenage. I don't know if you remember your teenagehood, because I, th I think everybody has been a teenager here. So I don't know if you're going to assume that you don't do that. You will reach for the person next to you, right? That's why I used to have funkies, used to have what? I used to go to funkies and I ran away. I actually can't remember. I went to the science ones. I never went to the fun ones, fun ones, because to me that used to be abuse. A, a boy coming to grind without my consent is not gold. It's not cool. It's not cute. It is not funny. Do not grind on me and I do not know you. Because that used to happen all, it still happens even now, right? So are you also talking about the children who are about to be raped? The girls who are in high school where boys jumped over a fence and tried to rape them in their own beds. Are we also talking about that? Because the poor who I'm telling for free, it's not lesbianism that you're, this thing you're calling, it's not actual queer people doing these things. Queer people will hide. They will not show you who they are. The people who are doing this are teenagers who are experimenting. Essentially, that is it. Teenagers are experimenting. So you have to put shut down and say, teenagers should never ever experiment, should never touch, say that with your full chest, and don't tell queer children you do not deserve to live because you're queer. That is not what is happening. In high schools, it is not queerness that is, it is children being sexual beings and learning that they are sexual beings, and the first person they'll reach to is the person who's next to them. No queer child will ever expose themselves, because we have seen the violence. We witness it every day. No child will say, let me decide about my life. Hmm. I want to be hated and killed. Who sits and says that? Tell me for free. Who sits and says that? Nobody in their right mind will just say, I am seeing you doing this to these people and I will sit and I will still do it because me ni ngumu. Ata yuko na sense, please. Now, the thing he also talked about, it's a crime. The crime I have explained is the penal code. The crime is against all of us. Section 162 and 165 are useless clauses that do not pertain to this society. It was said in 1967, when the colonialists left this country, they said, repeal that because we have seen in our society, this is a code that is destroying our society because you cannot police personal lives. You cannot, because the only way to enforce that would be you standing in my, bedroom, and it's actually towards the male act. So, useme, baby, yeah. We have to provide evidence. We are videoing. What are you doing? That is the only way you can enforce that. How many laws does that break in its own instance? Privacy, freedom of association, all these beautiful things, your dignity as a human being. How are you doing that to another human being? So you, the things that you think are right for you is not a blanket. Right? And the societies, the things that inform the law are a society's perception. The UK are the ones who brought us this useless law. Now we are, they told us repeal it. We did not listen because it served the majority of the people in power then to sustain it. So sustain it we did. And right. here we are, are going for a law that is contradicting the const constitution that people are trying to touch, to taint, because the people who are against the constitution were who? The church. Because it protected the rights of every single Kenyan. 
I am Kenyan first and I'm never leaving my country. That is period. Right. Regardless of anything. Okay. Antonia, what do you want to say? <laughs> Thank you. And I, am, I, I just love that now we are able to have that space where we let people talk <laughs> yeah. and then we react, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you want to say? Very important. Um, I, I want to make some few comments. Mm -hmm. um, one of the comments I want to make is with regards to love. Because uh, he mentioned love, it was mentioned love. Um, and from, um, from a perspective of believing in God, if God even defines what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat, what we should wear, what we shouldn't wear, mm -hmm. who we should marry, who we shouldn't marry, he also defines love. Love shouldn't be seen in the shallowness of Hollywood, like we have seen in movies. Love needs to be understood from the one who made us and who defines what reality is. So, for example, he will say, love is kind and love is patient. All right. Now, anything that contradicts that is not love. If whatever I do harms a person, that's not love. And for example, when my sister Nyambura speaks, I hear her, I hear the cry of that child who went through whatever she went through. She knows the whole nine yards. And this God of love, what would he do with Nyambura? It is what we see in the Bible. He covers her. He protects her. He rescues her, okay? Because this world that we are living in, we are even having this conversation because people determined they will not follow God. If God was to be followed, by the way, God is good. God has set systems and structures in motion that would, is what we would call probably utopia because it's so ideal, it's ridiculous. It is good. Interestingly, like here, we have the Christians, we have the Muslims. There's that reality of an end time reality that we aspire that in that reality, this stuff of sin, pain, heart, brokenness, da -da -da -da, will be over and done with. And that's why we talk about our heaven. But before we get there, we are here right now. So what would God do with individuals that are broken? He covers them. And the Bible is full of such narratives of where, like the example that he gave of a woman caught in adultery. And it's so ridiculous that a woman is caught in adultery alone. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's ridiculous that a woman will be caught in adultery alone. But it's because it tells you of the hypocrisy of certain societies. All right. But what does Jesus do? And that's why for me, the conversation to individuals who are hurt and broken is always to push them to this person because that's why I like for me in my brokenness that's why I found help I found help in a person in a person who found me in a person who told me by the way um, it, it's it's sad that you have been subjected to this but there is hope here and even orchestrated that I met with this doctor who then took me through this process da -da 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 -da. so when God meets with individuals who are broken he covers them and even when we were growing up, the society, at least I, I lived in that space where if you saw a mad person, you would be, you would be struck, you know, hit for laughing at them because that he, a coach, he's naked over there. It's natural for a child to laugh, but your mother will pull your ear. Why? Because even they understood when you see someone in trouble, you don't laugh at them. The best thing you can do as a loving society is take them for help. Take them to a facility where they will be able to get rescue. So that's the first thing that we need to be very clear. Can I ask that, a simple question? Yes, by I'm all sorry means. if I disrupt, just do you think they're in trouble? I think the majority of the people I have met who are lesbians, who are intersex, who are homosexual, the people I have interacted with, they actually want out. They actually want a change. If they could, they would go back to where they were abused, where, like now for Nyambura, where she was treated as strange, weird, untouchable, you know? Anyone who has those wounds would want to go back and have a different experience. 
Okay, because like the Bible tell us, the law of God is written in our hearts. You know what is right, what is wrong. Okay, okay? even before you do it. Mm. So the vast majority of individuals, and I'm specifying that because we have to be very categorical. And even right now, there are churches who have said, you are struggling with this, come, there is help. All right? Now, that which is the enemy is not those individuals. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And where I began, I began with a systemic ideology where people sit down, craft an agenda. The source. Yes, and then they use our brokenness, okay? They use our brokenness to bone, bind us in a very, very pathetic reality. Because someone has said, okay, this population of Africa, our median age is actually 16. Can you believe that? We are the youngest population in the world. Somebody decides, hmm, that is money. How do we make money from them? Ah, let's sexualize the children. Let's sexualize the youth. When we do that, we will benefit from contraceptives. We will uh, uh, we, we're going to benefit through abortion. We're going to benefit through sterilization and their numbers will go down. Why should their numbers be a threat? Why should our youthfulness be a threat? So like now for Anita Ray, and I love how she speaks and she says, I am this, but I'm defending this. I want us to be able to appreciate, and this, this is information that is online. You can Google it, you will find it. Documentations since the 60s, not before, all right? So this conversation is well choreographed and people are now manipulating on the brokenness of certain children targeting them and then now telling them you know what by the way you are all right okay in fact we will fund you when you do this like right now i have met young people who they have been given because they're, they're celebrities they have likes and mm -hmm. all this following mm -hmm. on social media mm -hmm. and they're told we're going to put you on salary you don't even have to be uh, a homosexual but just claim to be and then appear in our in our meetings appear in you know and they are literally just simply being given a pay package all right now we're living in desperate times in desperate realities so everyone wants to make a buck okay what have you done to that person you have monetized the person the trade and then right now you have encouraged them to pursue a certain cause that even they don't believe in. Mm -hmm. So that is what I, I'd like to call all of us to have a conversation about that systemic evil that if pursued will destroy life, will destroy families. Okay, because I'll tell you, like even when children are growing up, that's why they, we, we used to play chama macha baba. Why? Because there's this thing about society of growing up and having your own family. Okay? Okay? She said, you, to Bambura, what have you called it? It's called heteronormativity. Forced socialization into heteronormativity. Allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. Best. Yeah. Allow, allow me to finish. Yes. Because th that can be a branding. Okay? But every human being, because we, we, we carry the image of the sovereign one. You, I have brought up four children, so I know what I'm talking about. Before they can even, you know, you can explain ideas to them. There's something in them, okay, that a boy is a boy and a girl is a girl. And they will play games, all right? No town amstana and atakaku beba doli. What is that? No one teaches them. But it is how we have been formed. Now, of course, if you remove the idea of God, now you can come up with all creative ideas of how people get there and brand that. But I want us to focus on this common enemy whose agenda, if we do not shut down, will kill us as a people, because we are all people, will destroy family, and everybody knows heterosexual uh, 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 um, unions give life, okay? A homosexual union has no life. Mm. Interestingly, this is not the interesting <laughs> thing, that when you follow these conversations, you find now 
homosexual uh, unions adapting. Or they get some kids. Or they get kids, or whatever that conversation is. And I'm just wondering, okay, because in, in some spaces where that has been legalized, they're like, it's our right to bring up children, all right? But that child is a product of a certain conversation that was heterosexual, even if it is IVF, it is the ova and the mm -hmm. sperm yes. that came from a man mm. and the ova that came from mm -hmm. a woman, because mm -hmm. that's how God okay. has designed the reality. Yeah. yeah. Still your truth and their truth, yeah. and then the truth, right? I really want to hear from no, Edna. Before, before Edna speaks, like, yes. I like what she said. Yeah. She started very well, yeah. and it's really good. You say, by the time you discover that there was a problem with you, somebody guided you through, and you speak of one God, then at the same time you speak of the God of love, then you speak of the enemy within. So I'm literally confused. Which God are we talking about? Which enemy are we talking about? If there's one God, how comes now we have the God of love and we have the God of hate? Where does that come from? So I say very clearly mm. that God mm. defines reality. So God defines what love is. Mm -hmm. Like for example, I'm a mother. Mm -hmm. yes. If he wants to attack my children, I'm just using this as a real, uh, yes. as, just, as an, an example. example. Mm -hmm. If he wants to attack my child and I hold his arm and twist it, mm -hmm. that is love. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's in pain. Mm -hmm. I've broken his hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was defending mm -hmm. your child. It's my love mm -hmm. for my children mm -hmm. that makes me protect them mm -hmm. from harm. Mm -hmm. All right? So that if you follow that analogy, if anyone causes harm to my children and they're thrown behind the bars, that is love. And I know many times, like, even when people talk about, like, for example, the, the, the Sodom and Gomorrah uh, story in the scriptures, yeah? The, it is seen as, as coming from a place of hate. The same God of love, because he has prescribed and says, this is the way a man will meet a woman come together i call that marriage he, he says i call that marriage and from that marriage i will give them children all right whenever there is a diversion that's what perversion is perversion means like he was using perversion means a diversion from the ideal so when the ideal is male and female any diversion be it with an animal be it with uh, yourself, be it with anything else, is perversion. Okay. So that, uh, like for example, when Anita Ray was saying that that is a bad word, mm. it is a bad word simply because it describes and defines the abhorrent, mm. the things that we shouldn't touch, okay? And, and God, this God, is an incredible God, and there are things that he says, this one do not cross, because mm. if you cross that line, I fight against you, all right? So that when we see like now the society of Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. it had reached the place where it was the norm. Mm -hmm. It was no longer individuals. Mm -hmm. Remember what I said about individuals. Mm -hmm. Individuals are having their struggles mm -hmm. or they're expressing themselves in a certain way. Mm -hmm. It's not every day you, you, when was the last time you saw fire coming, sulfur, mm -hmm. burning? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't happen everywhere. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God is saying for individuals, I'll give you opportunity for recourse. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep on giving you an opportunity. Like, like now for, for I like, my... I like what you just said. Let me just finish. Let me just finish kindly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Allah, allow me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, God gives opportunities, mm -hmm. even for bad people, mm -hmm. to change mm -hmm. their ways. Mm -hmm. And he reaches out because he's a merciful God. At the end, he knows. Mm -hmm. You know, if you persist on this, mm -hmm. I'm going to judge you. Mm -hmm. Like now in Revelation, mm -hmm. he says very clearly when he begins the list of the people he's throwing in hell, guess who's the first is the homosexual. Why is he saying that? It is because he knows this is destructive even for you as an individual. You will depart from the ideal that he had set for you. You you miss out on the heterosexual marriage mm -hmm. that he had intended for you mm -hmm. and him being able also to bring on progenity and, and children from that lineage. So that, that's what I'm saying, that this is one God. When he is Expressing love, he gives definition of what love looks like because he himself is love. Mm -hmm. But that love does not mean he will not punish. 
when there is a detour, when there is a perversion, like now, uh, adultery. Adultery is sin. Okay? Like for example, huh? oh yeah, the eighth commandment yeah, says, everybody, do not commit. Everybody is going to hell. Most people, half the population is going to go to hell. No we will not go to hell <laughs> because people, people have opportunity to change. No, in okay? every religion, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. In every, no, no, no. You're going to hell. Who? No, no, no. No, no in That's every no, religion. No. Like, no. Let me finish. Are you not going to hell as a Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. Uh, okay. Allow me. Allow me. Uh, allow me, yes. allow me, allow me, allow me, Jassi, just allow. Okay, no, let me just finish. One minute, one minute. Anton, it's, it's one. really like funny. The same time you're saying God gives opportunity, at the same time you're condemning the LGBT people being a mistake, being a disease, like no, no, no. so calling no, it no, no, no. individually. No. It's, a same, no, it's, it's a choice. No, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a yes, choice. it's a choice. Yes. But when when. The LGBT people are just saying, yeah, that's how you guys are putting yes. it. It's a choice. You even not say in the first <laughs> no, revelation day, yes. most people were going to go <laughs> to hell to jail uh, homosexual. Now, what I'm going to do, all of you, all of you, all of you, now, we are going to be silent yes. and listen to Edda. Yeah. And then, okay. any reaction will okay. follow. Yeah. All right? Yes. Doc. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, it's been, quite, <laughs> it's been quite a discussion. Eh? Yes. Yeah, uh, I'm a child of the 60s, so probably I'm a parent mm -hmm. to some of you here. Yeah. And um, um, the one thing that I want to say is that I'm speaking to you as a mother, a grandmother, a Kenyan, and also a professional. First of all, I'd like to say, Nyambura, I'm really sorry about what you went through with the psychologist. There are so many people who have the word counsellor on their card. But please always ask, even for the listeners, ask somebody which professional organisation they affiliated to. Because I was equally traumatised by somebody who had the word counsellor on her card. And she said, I belong to the wrong religion. And she brought in somebody to come and pray in tongues over me and I could not talk for two years. So please, let's be very clear that as, come, as mental health professionals, we have ethics, yeah? Then another thing that I wanted to say was that, um, Daddy Owen, you triggered me, and yet we're on the same side, eh? <laughs> Yeah. I left the church because of that kind of talk when I was a young person. We need to, like I said, communication, body language, tone of voice, and the words that you use. Eh? We need to speak in love. Much as I was told to come and be on the anti-LGBTQ, I don't call myself anti-anything. I call myself pro-life and pro-family. I believe in the dignity of the human person from conception until natural death. And um, uh, my identity, though, I never had it before. When I left the church, I got into a, a lot of trouble. So, and I suffered the consequences of that. Eh? So, um, I would say that our constitution is very clear. Number one is that the first article one is about the sovereignty of the people. We are actually, all the people up there making the constitution and ruling us are actually our employees. Yep. Yeah. Correct. So, and um, article two says that this constitution is supreme. Article 45 says that marriage is the unity, bet uh, the, the union between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it says that marriage is the bedrock of society, the basic unit of society. In fact, all, most of the problems in society can be traced to um, family dysfunction. Yeah, and with marriage at the center. And that's why we need at all costs to preserve this constitution. Yeah. And Kenyans, there was a study that was done by KCPF, it's called the Ipsos study. And they asked specifically what uh, their, their views on the legalization of uh, homosexuality is, what their views on abortion was, and they were categorically clear, over 90% no. So this, um, the, the ruling um, that was there is actually has been used in South Africa as a gateway to legalize same-sex marriage. And that is what we, me personally as a prob, uh, I, I see it very difficult 
to say that you don't you have no right to exist that is definitely not my thinking at all we are all everybody here is made in the image and likeness of god yeah and our constitution talks about the almighty god of all creation even our anthem talks about almighty god of all creation yeah so we are all children of god eh? and please be careful about that triggering line you took me back to my age 19 17 18 years old when i was so hurt many people have church wounds even you've had them you've been talking to them in your shows eh? yeah so we, before we came on to the show we talked about the um the difference the blanket thing that we say is information eh? information can be three things it can be deception it can be the truth and it can be fiction yeah so i think that um this thing of my truth well i've lived for a long time eh? and i've seen the before and i've seen the after and there's this saying you talked about feelings eh? that feelings don't care about the science and science doesn't care about feelings is there a halfway point that we can meet and talk to people from a point of view the truth in love the bible says that eh? because i identify as a christian i identify as a daughter of god um so uh, yeah D- when you talk about the church it's actually anybody who's been baptized eh? so i also can speak as a christian but the bible says sp- always speak the truth in love eh? um you you talked about it being a western thing we don't have a problem with people who are lgbtq myself i was molested by lesbians if you want to say that somebody might have a problem with lgbtq but in my healing journey i was healed from that and i have forgiven them i can even say hi to them because they're still alive eh? I, it took me 45 years to tell my mother that and she was really hurt so what about the innocence of the child i was also exposed to pornography at the age of 7 that completely destroyed my world view because many times we tell our children don't talk to boys and but what about the female house helps what about the female caregivers and all that whatever my rights were were violated and i suffered from that identity crisis for a very long time but i couldn't talk about it because those things were not talked about at that time eh? so um in my healing journey uh, i came to forgive and the people who were closest to me and who walked with me on the journey were actually christians and they were priests and uh, the very same priest so not all priests are when i was very vulnerable they were there for me and priests have been very good in my life and they've been instrumental in my healing journey yeah? we have injuries and uh, there's something called the adverse childhood experiences which i always try to present to the medical community it's the biggest unresolved problem in um in in public health right now we have um the adverse childhood experiences which even even they contribute to our sexual debut and uh, why people become sexually active early much as they're saying you know these teenagers who are getting pregnant we must give them contraceptives i always believe in fact my organization says it when our motto is when solving problems always go to the root cause of why people are behaving the way they do we do not have a problem with lgbtq what we i understand that we have a problem is the designers of the sexual revolution mm. and these people are making a lot of money and it's about totalitarian control the 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 the, the, the sexual revolutionists the sexual re- revolution has three parts eh? it the first part it's always based on a lie with an end game now the first part of the sexual revolution ideology says that we can separate sex from babies the way god designed mm-hmm. sex is that the baby should be the outcome isn't it mm-hmm. so um, that is the first lie and so that is why they say that um, with that lie what they want at the end is population control and depopulation starting with people of black skin that's the eugenics agenda and um, that is what people should know and then so what they propose is contraception and there's no contraception that's 100% and these are really making women sick eh? mm-hmm. if you check an out an article that was uh, written about me you know they put in the coil they put in the the implant and then when me- women get these adverse side effects um including cancer including uh depression um 
and uh, clots and all that, strokes and all that, then the health workers don't want to remove them after being so friendly when putting them in. So that is the, uh, the contraceptive ideology. Then, the, the, then of course, when, abo when, when contraception uh, doesn't work, abortion. you need abortion. So that's what they say, no child. Then the second part of the sexual revol revolution ideology is the divorce ideology. And this lie says that children do not need their biological parents, which is a huge lie, isn't it? Children do not need their, their, their biological parents. And the end game of this was to get uh, contract parenting, to separate parenting from uh, uh, biological parenting. So they, they, they want to separate legal parenting from biological uh, parenting from biological reality. So why they did that was to pre prepare for the second one, for the third part of the ideology. And the, 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 the second part of the ideology includes IVF, includes surrogacy. So they always pretend, they say that we want to help people who are infertile. But actually what they were preparing for was for adoption for the sterile so-called marriages. Sorry, I won't call it a marriage. Mm -hmm. Then, um, so what happens is that they got all those, in. of course it's a multi-million dollar agency uh, thing to do IVF and to do uh, surrogacy and all that. And of course divorce, making divorce very easy and legal. Children are very traumatized by divorce. They need both parents as far as possible. So then you have the third part of the ideology which says that um, the sex of the body doesn't matter. That's the gender ideology that we're talking about today. The sex of the body doesn't matter. And yet you find that everything about a woman's body is directed towards having a child. Yeah, the ovulation, the, I'm, I'm a fertility education coach. So our ovulation cycle, well, we're taught the menstrual cycle, unfortunately, but we need to be taught that ovulation is the central point of our cycle. Everything about our body from the time of puberty is to create and uh, a child, of course, with a person of the opposite sex and implant and carry that baby to term and we are nurturers, yeah? So try and, uh, when, you, when you have this um, issue of saying that the sex of the body doesn't matter and it does matter, in fact, um, the first part of the, the, uh, the, the um, gender ideology was radical feminism, which was the second wave of feminism. The first wave of feminism was very genuine it was about women not being property, women being, should be allowed to have property, Freedom. and we, sh we should be allowed to go to school and all that. These were Christian women, and they, they believed we were all made in the image and likeness of God. We shall not be discriminated against. But the second wave of feminism with people like Margaret Sanger, with people like Simone de Beauvoir, they took it to another level. And it seems like their aim was to say that our fertility is something that should be eradicated kabisa. And they seem to get the best, the worst parts of what makes a man bad and now feminine and say this is what we need to be as women. We should be sterile, we should be able to work just like men, we should be able to sleep around just like men, you know, and uh, we should not ever submit in a marriage and whatever. And you find that, but when you listen to many, uh, this brought about the radical feminism, isn't it? So when you listen to radical feminists, Unfortunately, they're very wounded people, usually with a father wound, eh? or they were molested by uh, an uncle or something Some like woman. that. Yeah. So all men are bad, all men are trash. I've been to, I've been to one of these um, meetings where we are told to write that all men are trash. So I said, I'm not going to subscribe to that. And this is what they call the patriarchy, because I do know so many wonderful men, including my sons, eh? uh, three they're gentlemen. Um, yeah, and so this, the, the, the LGBTQ movement, we have the, the people who are genuinely confused. You talk about uh, sexuality appearing as in puberty. Actually, children, the thing that they need most in life is the relationship between mommy and daddy. Yeah, that is Sorry? the relationship between the parents. Studies have shown that divorce is one of the biggest traumas. Yeah, Relating to sexuality? Um, trying to relate them. Okay, you see, sexu uh, sexual identification happens very early before you can remember. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you feel, the people feel like, uh, can feel like I did, that you were born that way. You understand? Eh? So um, you have the psychosexual stages of development, 
and the psychosocial stages of development. And at a very early age, the relationship between the parents really affects the child. You have the electoral complex of a girl between her dad and her mom. Then you have the, the Oedipus complex of a little boy between the, the, her, her father, and her mother. And then they come out of it if the family is functional. And um, you can also have very, uh, a very masculine uh, girl, tomboys. They usually grow out of it. Many of them, and I know some people who, many people now who are tomboys as children, you can have an effeminate uh, man also. What happens with male um, same-sex attraction is that um, it is uh, an emotional need which becomes sexualized. Mm -hmm. You find that they didn't relate well. They, don't, they, they are craving for a relationship with a male figure in their family, especially the father. The father figure, they didn't have healthy male relationships and they were also bullied. That is a very high rate. Um, so they were bullied. They didn't relate well uh, with any proper male figure in the family, um, then uh, you find that they, it is an emotional need which becomes sexualized. And um, so when, when they get sexualized in that way, they, um, I understand that, but what you said about conversion therapy, you don't go to convert somebody. When somebody comes with an unwanted sexual attraction, what you're supposed to do is try to identify the trauma and bring them out of the trauma if there, it is there, and if they want to change that, is, it's not the therapist's idea. But if somebody comes with a delusion that they are a girl trapped in a boy's body or a boy trapped in a girl's body, as a therapist, you do have a duty. That is a delusion. You do have a duty to say that you need to challenge that. Because if you come to me and you say that you identify as a cow, like now there's a man who has identified as a disabled woman and he's getting all the benefits. <laughs> There's crazy things happening out there. Um, there's this NBA player who has, uh, who has um, a son who has now I come out talk. as a girl. So what I'm saying is, these same people, World Health Organization, who come and tell us that FGM is bad, they're mutilating their children without parental consent. Yeah? Does that make any sense to you? Because if somebody comes with healthy breasts and she says she's a boy trapped in a girl's body, and then um, you, you cut off the breasts and you try to fashion a penis from this arm. There's a lady called Scott who has had CG 17, 17 surgeries. She's had so many operations. The, the sexual revolution people never tell you the other side of the story. Mm -hmm. They never tell you about the women who, for example, suffered from contraceptives. They never tell you about the women who suffered from post-abortion syndrome. And if you try to talk, they silence you. Mm -hmm. They never talk to you about the women who, the people who regretted the uh, sex change operation. And there's so many. There's Change Regret Org. There's Walt Hare, who was actually, he, he was, he was uh, a woman, what you call a woman for a very long time. So what happens is that this ideology, the gender ideology, is not sustainable. It's a, the whole thing they call sexual and reproductive health and rights is not sustainable. It is all about population control, number one. Two, making billions, because every child who comes in there identifying as a person of the opposite sex has a dollar sign over them, yeah? Because they need to go through surgeries, they need to go through hormone replacement therapies. And me as a doctor, I made that oath, yeah? To do no harm, the first part of medicine is to do no harm. The second part is always to do good. The, second, the third part is autonomy. Do these people have informed consent? A 15-year-old girl, you're cutting off her breast, you're fashioning a penis. You know, it's completely horrific. It's a, uh, this person is not allowed to drive, not old enough to drive, not old enough to smoke or drink, not old enough to inherit property, but she's old enough to identify in the wrong body. So what we're having is social contagion, 4,000% increase of people identifying as gender identity disorder. And so... What we call is this, this is called malpractice, the, the hijack of the professions. Yeah, I don't uh, subscribe to that at all. And even the mental health profession has been hijacked. Yeah, it's all about making money off these uh, our brothers and sisters, our daughters and our sons, 
the World Health Organization, what he, the experiment that they did, it wasn't an experiment, it was a direct attempt to, dis, to sterilize our women in the year 2015. You'll find it, there's a movie which is called, they've made a documentary which is called uh, Infertility Diabolical Agenda. Mm -hmm. And so they, they sterilize our women and then they call it reproductive health and rights. They, um, they, um, Mary Stops, for example, has been here since 1985. So many people have been killed, so many children have been killed. And this, uh, if you put all, for example, the people who identify as same-sex attracted on an island, can I ask this question, how long will that community last? How long will that last? Long it's it all to... because we, they're not able to give birth, yeah? So identify where the pain is coming from and uh, try to talk to them to understand um, where, where to try and understand them. It's not about change therapy. Uh, I know people who are gay, um, and uh, we've had these conversations before. And there's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of trauma that needs to be helped. And then the issue of sin. You know, uh, for example, I'm a single parent um, with grown-up children. Um, the sexuality is what fornication is sin. Yeah, just calling them out and saying, you know, sodomy is sin. You know, fornication is also sin, adultery is sin, living together without being married is also recognized as sin. So when they see you as uh, on, on this side living together without being married and all that, and then condemning them, I don't think that goes down very well. Eh? Sin is sin, yeah? And uh, so the, the, somebody once said that the greatest problem with this generation is a lack of a sense of sin, you know? Anything goes, yeah? I've been abstinent since 2014. Guys ask me out. I'm divorced. I'm a single mother. Uh, it's not like I'm not attracted. But you see, also leading with your sexuality is a problem because we are so much more than our sexuality. Did I sit here and say I'm heterosexual and I'm attracted to men? No, 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 no. So we are so much more complex. I am a spirit. Uh, I have a soul which contains my mind, my emotions, my free will. And I live in a body. So the, uh, even the Bible, but the Bible says that sexual sin is so unique in that uh, you, 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 it's a sin that you, you, you commit against yourself. Mm. And, and so the consequences are much more worse. And so when I say the term pro-life, um, we talk about the, the, the part of the Bible that says, before I said before your life and death, Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. choose life so that you and your children may Maybe. live. And comprehensive sexuality education is all about sexualizing the next generation. Because that's one of the things that was recommended in your last talk. Mm -hmm. It is nothing, it sounds very nice, but it's all about teaching, normalizing, telling them that sexual, uh, your sexuality is a gender, uh, your, your gender is fluid, you know. Um, so the problem that I have is, okay, and it also normal, normalizes sodomy. By the way, all the studies, the social studies are there. The Gay and Lesbian uh, Medical Association has said that you need to talk about 10 different things that will happen to you. Sorry, the what? The Gay and Lesbian Medical Association. There's nothing like that. I've not seen anything. Uh, you've not seen it. You can Google it. Somebody Google it. Gay and <laughs> Lesbian <laughs> Medical Association. Mm -hmm. For example, sodomy. Yeah? What does sodomy result in? Sodomy results in prolapse because it was not designed for that. So you get people who have to wear nappies, isn't it? Yes. You also get cancer yeah. um, of, the, of the anus, a very high rate of cancer of the anus, very high rates of, uh, of the, the, what do you call it, the, the, the colon. They also have very high rates of suicide, very high rates of depression, very high rates of um, suicide, depression, alcohol, drug abuse, even in countries where the behavior mm. is totally acceptable. Yeah, just a second. Yeah. You, you found it, Nyambura? Get it's Lesbian actually, Medical um, Association. It's an international organization. It says, yes. it's the GLMA, mm -hmm. and I'm using Wikipedia, so mm -hmm. I don't know what about Wikipedia, but it says it's an international organization of approximately a thousand LGBTI. Ah, LGBT, mm -hmm. healthcare professionals and students of all disciplines. Its members include physicians, advanced practical nurses, 
physician assistants, nurses, um, behavioral health specialists, researchers, and mm -hmm. academic whatever. So it's, so there. it's there. Yeah, so very oh. high rates of HIV, very high rates of human papilloma virus, which causes the cancer, very high rates of hepatitis, which causes liver uh, cancer also. So when we are talking from a scientific point of view, which I prefer rather than religion, I'm, t I'm speaking in love, so that if somebody decides to choose this lifestyle, then it will they know what the consequences are. For example, if uh, if one of the things they like like to push in the propaganda, I'm talking about the propagandists, not the people who are unwell. Um, they 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 talk about the that it is they were born that way. They hijacked the civil rights movement to say that being gay, lesbian is just like being black. You see. But there's actually no gene. And even studies have been done, for example, the one in Australia, 33,000 twins. Eh? 33,000 twins, they found that the rate of uh, both identical twins being um, uh, lesbian or gay is uh, only 11%. If it was an immutable thing that people are born with, then um, you, you'd uh, expect it to be 100%. Mm. Then another thing you said about intersex. Intersex is completely different. Uh, intersex is somebody with a disorder of sexual development, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And you can't tell what the sex of the baby is at birth. But then the, the real sex will come out at puberty, puberty. Yeah. yeah. So if by, by, because people are so embarrassed to say we don't know what it is, mm -hmm. huh? um, they, they raise the, the child in a particular sex. And so the, this, um, if the child, the, the, the secondary sexual um, characteristics are the same as the, 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 as the, si the sex that they gave, um, then it's okay. But if they're an op a different uh, sex, like um, there's a gentleman, I've forgotten his name, then that is a very big problem. Eh? And so what uh, is a good idea is to say that this should be taken as a disability and then because and no intervention should be done until the person reaches uh, puberty because uh, that's when we will know what the true sex is. Then another thing is that this word gender is, uh, uh, is very, very controversial because it comes, you can Google John Money and how he mutilated children and forced them to have sex. He's the one who came up with the word gender. And the word gender um, is supposed to come from sex, yeah? But uh, apparently you said 27 genders. Mm -hmm. The BBC was indoctrinating children the other day that there are 100 genders, huh? So, yeah, she said more. So more than 100, mm -hmm. they, they, they had 100 genders. Mm -hmm. What was uh, the other point? So the, the, the gender ideology, and then every, uh, right now the World Health Organization is saying that Failure to have a sexual partner is quite is, a So me, I belong to ICU. Maybe you should take it. <laughs> so, Yeni, I'm sorry. I know, right? But I'm very happy, by the way. I don't subscribe to the World Health Organization at yes. all. Yes, yeah, so basically, let's talk about the other side of the story. It's good to have a, a, a balanced view and um, to treat one another with love and call out the people who are making money of sick mm. people, people no. who are not feeling well. Yes, yeah? I have yes. a question mm -hmm. for you yeah. because you identify mm -hmm. also as a Christian, right? Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. <coughs> in a layman's language, yes. when they say I belong to the, this community, yes. does that, what does that do to you? Do you consider that a sin? From the Christian yes. perspective, From the right? Christian perspective, same-sex attraction and acting out on it are two totally different things. Oh. Like me, I'm, opposite, I'm, I'm attracted to the opposite sex, mm -hmm. but I don't act out on it, yes. you see. But being, you are a child, of, you're a daughter of God, you're a son of God, you're a daughter of God. The, that one doesn't make it, I've also suffered it from it before, because of my trauma, because of my molestation and all that. It's not that we're saying we do not want you to exist, which I don't know where it came from. I guess because of the language some mm. people were using. Mm -hmm. But being same-sex attracted is not probably the, the identity. There are many people who have actually come out of it of their own choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, They've even formed associations. And, but these people who want to make money of it want people to think that they are born that way. 
at the same time, they're saying that gender is a social construct. Mm -hmm. Do you see how they're contradicting themselves? Mm -hmm. Gender is a social construct, yet we are born like this. Sexual then, orientation and gender identity are two different things. You're speaking about two different things. Okay, okay gender Elaborate. identity and uh, there's, there's gender identity, which is feeling uh, probably trapped in the wrong body. By the way, they've undermined the radical feminists. Yes, for the purpose yeah. of yeah. the audience, yes. because uh -huh. a lot of terms are also new to majority okay. of the people who are yeah. watching. You said something yes. important. Yes. Right. Define the two. Okay, so she's speaking about gender identity and mm -hmm. social, sexual orientation. Gender mm -hmm. identity is where you're speaking about binaries. There's only male and female, period. Mm -hmm. That is what you're just saying. Sexual, I mean, gender identity is. And that's where you're saying also that there's someone who'll be deluded to wake up and decide they're a man or a, wo mm -hmm. a woman, but they're presenting the difference. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Sexual orientation is the other bit of saying, I am queer. I did not even introduce myself with my sexuality. I introduced myself with Nyambura. Yes. Yeah? And I did not even say what I am. I am not a lesbian. I am a queer person mm -hmm. with the full understanding that mm -hmm. genders are not two. There is more than that. And people present them differently, right? So. When you say sexual orientation, the scope of that is where you see LGBTQIA+. Mm -hmm. But that A has two connotations. There's asexual and there is a romantic. So, What's a romantic? A romantic, they don't do romance. Like, a romantic or a romantic? Yes, I agree. Uh -huh. And do you see what yeah. I'm saying? Like, if, if yes. someone is explaining something like this to you, and then you say, no, me choke, and then you say, you're throwing it no, in I'm your face. Yes. You I cannot be saying you're throwing no, it in yes. your face when you're being educated, yeah. but to me choke. It doesn't, yes. it doesn't, it it, it beats the conversation. Okay. Because what am I doing? There's mm. also pansexual. There are also people who identify as. Uh, yes. minor attracted and so they're trying That's to push. No, no, let me just break yeah. that down right now yeah. very categorically uh -huh. the bible number one mm -hmm. was used to say mm -hmm. Sodom and Gomorrah story mm -hmm. the whole story was because it was explained in acts mm -hmm. yes the one of the disciples explained it Sodom and Gomorrah was being attacked because of rape when you read the story at the end of the day, the, I, the scene was the rape really? of foreigners. As in, Even in Quran, actually, it's yeah, it is it's rape strange. of foreigners. Yeah. yeah? Sodom and Gomorrah was not about queerness at all. Oh. At yeah. all, at all. It was it, about it was Sodom, it was it was Sodom. It was, you're yeah. using the homosexual. You're using the word Sodom yes. to explain. That place. Are you, so are you hearing what I'm saying? Men want to rape so Men want, want to, to rape who? Let me explain. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. So, what happened was this. Yes. Lot, mm -hmm. when he brought, uh, God brought his visitors to him, right? The village Kaskia, right? Now, for them, their culture was, their societal culture then was rape. And there was a prevalence for it. And that is why Lord said, do not touch my foreigners, let me give you my daughters. So are there women foreign... wanting to rape the men yeah. who came? This is why I'm telling you, women. when you make this argument when you're coming from a sexual place, that is your perversion because you're not hearing what I'm saying. Anita, because, because I want to hear what I'm saying. Let me finish my thoughts. Let me finish my thoughts. Because you're not hearing what I'm saying. You're putting the gender, you're forcing it to be about this men is what and I'm men. Saying. Mm. The crime is rape. They were trying to rape people. The culture of that society yes. was rape. So, don't rape my visitor. It would not have mattered if God would have sent angels who are women. The crime was rape. God would have, in that society, who would be listened to women or men? God will send you men, right? So that you can hear his word, right? I don't know any disciples who are women. I don't know. We have never had. So, were they speaking in these capacities? They were not. Angels were women, and they were mm, mm. So, in this capacity, when you come and say that they were coming, Lord told him, Let me, let told them, because they were coming from a uh, ring around his house, yes. Akawambia, let me give you my daughters. You can rape them instead. But these people were adamant. We want to rape your visitors. We want the foreign I left Joy Guza. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. It is not about gender, it is not about queerness, it is nothing about that. It is about rape. And when you go into the Bible, the Bible was converted language-wise when it was being translated. The thing that you read about homosexuality there was actually pedophilia. God was saying, do not touch children. Do not, and God, I, I give you the job. Please go interrogate your Bible very deeply because I have done this work for myself and I'm hoping someone will do this also as well. Go read that um, thing about the, that verse, homosexuality, whatever, there's a verse that says specifically homosexuality. Yes. The actual translation was loose. 
loose enough to put in homosexuality when you actually meant do not touch your young ones. They close. So even in the cases you're talking about, people call um, lesbians raping children, that is a crime. We are not negating that. That is a crime. Do not touch children. Pedophilia is a whole other crime. So at the end of the day, when you come in to equate it, you're just doing what that person who translated the Bible, you're doing his job for him. Yes. But you realize that they're pushing for it, eh? That the, the, people, the, the people that I'm, I'm telling you, not the ones who are having the challenges. Yeah. The ones who are behind the sexual revolution ideology. It's all a slippery slope. For example, in the, in the, the what I forgot to say about the the population control, you have not only contraception and abortion and sterilization, you have euthanasia. So they start out by saying, oh, they always, they always uh, appeal to our, our, our empathy. They say, oh, why should somebody suffer? Yeah? But now you have children in Canada who can decide to die by suicide without parental percent. So that's why it has reached. It's all a slippery slope. Now where we have reached with pedophilia, for example, there's that case in the United States where two men uh, who uh, who identified as same sex attracted? They were mar they were they were in a, a same sex union. Yes. They they actually yes. sodomized the children yeah. on camera and shared it as a pornography, mm -hmm. and that was really really severe. So this is all a slippery slope, which the, uh, many people don't know uh, about the the true agenda of the people who are behind it and making so much money. I wanna, guys, yeah. I wanna wind up because I know yeah. we can go on and on and on mm -hmm. and on, but also I'm a bit time sensitive because I know some of you. Part two. You want part two? <laughs> <laughs> you guys want part two? My audience, let me know if you want part two, but it would be very unfair to wind up this discussion without asking for a parting shot from all of you. So I don't know if Daddy Owen, you want to go first. Your observation, <laughs> your observation, and also a parting shot. And I like that you've also brought in the idea of having a part two because the audience will also watch this. And I know they also have questions on the comment section that we can be able to incorporate in part two of this conversation. So maybe that you had observation and a parting um, shot. Number one, uh, I wanted to correct her, but yes. I, I, I think she corrected the, the statement about perversion. Okay. And uh, it was not an insult, mm. she corrected it. Okay. And then uh, number two, to just to mention uh, what the doctor said. Yes. Uh, people where I come from, eh? being in social media, being an artist, a gospel minister and all that, yeah? we, we deal with people differently, you understand? And even, I always say, even in our government, there are people who are kinandi, who are, you understand, like how she's handling the situation. People like us, we are radical, mm. we're in the streets, you understand? There we meet people who, if, 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 if you don't deal with them the way they come, yeah? because it's, I, I never abuse anyone, but I'm always strong with what I say because I know what I'm speaking is the truth. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's not that I... And from the first statement I said, I said, from the word go, I said, I don't hate anyone. I hate the sin. Okay. I, I, I never hate the sinner. And he came back to my point. Everyone has, an, everyone has, a, has a chance here yeah, mm -hmm. to be talked to through therapy, and people like us, I can, through my radicalism, I can still talk to you and you see the other side of where I come from. And you still see the truth I'm trying to preach to everyone. And going back to her point eh, about, uh, I've just opened Roman 1.27. It says, in the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. There's no rape here. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty of their error. You understand? So here, I just wanted to go back to the point of Sodom and Gomorrah. Here, these Romans, this is not even Leviticus, this is not Old Testament, this is New Testament. It's talking about homosexuality. It's not about rape. When you're talking about a man and a man, it's a different story. When you're talking about a woman and a woman, it's a different story. And if the Bible is condemning it, I'm, and most of my, 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 my statements on Twitter and, and, and uh, uh, Instagram who are trying to ban me, and I said, number one, I said, I preach the gospel without Instagram. Mm -hmm. 
and I became who I am even before Instagram. So whether they ban me or they don't ban me, it's fine. We we'll still preach. I'm like John the Baptist. He was radical. Even Jesus was radical. If Jesus was not radical, he, was not be, he, would not be, he wouldn't be crucified, by the way, to be very honest. Because he was calling out sin. He was telling, guys, this is wrong. This is right. This is wrong. This is right. And even the people he was dealing with, they were not like weak people. You understand? Dealing with the Pharisees was not easy. So there's a way you address them and you tell them, here, woman, don't sin no more. But you go to the synagogue and you find those guys there. You take a whip. You take a whip. And you whip all of them. You understand? By that mean by whipping them, he wanted to kill them. No. You're telling them, this is wrong. A child, you always say, I'm a parent. You tell a child, this is wrong, this is right. There's a point where you're crossing, I must tell you, this is wrong. I can't just leave you because I say, because you're my child, because... I must preach love unto you and leave you to do what you want to do. No way. So as a Christian and as a gospel artist, I'll continue speaking about when I say something is a sin, I call it out. I'm not the prefect. I'm just, I always quote the Bible. I'm not a prefect. When something is a crime, we always call it out as a society. You understand? So I'm not, diff I'm not even from anyone who is calling out a crime when they see a crime. Mm -hmm. You understand? And when it comes to preaching love, I'm always number one to preach love. Mm -hmm. My songs preach love. My songs, I have a song even called Vanity, which is talking about a rich man, a young girl, and I call it out. You understand? Mambo ya sponsor, and I call it out. If it's wrong, it's wrong. And if it's right, nasema, we. <laughs> I praise the Lord. And that's who I am. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Owen. you so Darcy. For me is, I believe, this is not our end goal. These are just things of this world. And every one of us have choices that we make for who we are and who we choose to love. I just wish if parents can decide to love their kids who they are, uh, to the people who are not LGBT pro, get to know us, sit down with us, get to hear our story. Maybe it will ring a bell in your life. And I don't think an LGBTQ member would come out and offend any straight person unless they're provoked. So we also need to know where we stand with this. You guys are parents, you have no idea how your kids are gonna grow up to be or who they're going to choose to be. It's not a choice that you're gonna make for them. So when you're saying things on social or when you're putting out things, when you're putting out words, be careful on who it's going to affect later on. In the future, maybe that article will be used because of your relative, your kid, your cousin, your nephew, your niece, and it still comes back. What goes around comes around. The thing is we need to find a balance and live in a society where we care and protect for one another. That's what we were brought here to do and educate one another. It's not we're here to argue with people and say, oh, this is wrong. There is so much that we do wrong behind closed door. Who judges us? There's only one person who's gonna judge us. And like, you said like most people who are gonna to go to hell are homosexual. You'll be so surprised when you get to heaven and most of them are going to heaven and the sinners who are called sinners on earth are actually not sinners in heaven. So let's try not call, let's not call names on one another and say, even the Quran says, the only person who has the power to judge on who's going where is Allah, the one and only being like, the creator of a universe. Mm -hmm. If you cannot create a universe and have sky on top and land on ground, then you have no power or you have no right to say, to call somebody a sinner. Jesus never called anyone a sinner. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere in the Bible or the Quran that says Jesus or Isa said, this one is a sinner. Yes, he he, Sorry. <laughs> he had, he, <laughs> he did. The Pharisees. Mm -hmm. He did? Yeah. 
Mm. Okay. Okay. This, okay. Uh, in the Quran, I have not seen anything like that. Because of being hypocrites, like yeah. you said. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. again, like mm -hmm. I think, like most of us mm -hmm. out here in today's world, mm -hmm. just because we have the power of the social and we can say whatever we want to say. Yeah. My point is, we all have a secret, we all have a sin, we all have things that we've done that we're not proud of. Mm -hmm. But if somebody has choose to live their life on how they want to live their life, it's their personal choice. It has nothing to do with anybody. If I have not offended you or you in any way, I don't see why we need to have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anita? I am... Um... I read a lot. I've read the Quran. I'm shocked. Um, I, I find religion quite interesting. It is interesting. It's a book. I say the books, the best written books in the world are religious books. They invoke thoughts. I believe in God heavily because I've seen him. I've seen not him, but I've seen him work in my life considering where I've come from. I come from a very spiritual family, literally. I have raised my kids in church. I have two kids. They're baptized, all of them, yeah? But I don't go to church, funny enough. But the one thing I know more than anything is that God is love. Even in the Quran, Allah is love. I, I respect Muslims for how they value love and how they love each other. I value that a lot. Christians have based our religion on fighting against each other amongst ourselves and throwing hate in the name of love, which is really not right. Mm -hmm. We, as he said, if I haven't wronged you, we should be fighting different things that you're in. I want you to see you post the Usikimi last post. If you haven't read that post and you don't break, then you're not human. Because that's something done by men to a young girl. That page every day, Jerry is a good friend of mine for years. I've seen her rescue kids, a one-year-old raped. Nobody talks about it. We should be fighting so much more than two consenting adults. It's okay not to agree with them. One thing I hate the most about the LGBTQA, and I do hate it, is the fact that they throw it in our faces. Sometimes, let me clarify, right now, it is in cartoons. That pisses me off. Because I hate it when my daughter watches that. And now I have to go through the whole process of explaining to her how I wasn't raised. I hate that. I'm okay with anybody living their own life. What you do in your bedroom is none of your business. Because I never introduce myself. Oh, I'm Anita. I never introduce myself as that. So whoever you sleep with is actually your business. It should never be my business. But Andrew Tate said something, and I'll quote him, he's controversial, but he says things we need to hear sometimes. Don't teach my children how to love, let me teach them how to love. Those are my kids. No, that's my only problem. I, I tell people, I might be a celebrity, I hate that word, but then I'm a role model to my children, mine. When I go home, my son is 14, I tell my son what to do. I, don't, I won't dictate what your son does. So by all means, in Jesus' name, don't tell my child what to do. Don't, don't push it down my throat. Everybody has a right to live and love. It's your right. And as you said, nobody in this, uh, between heaven and earth has a right to judge. I believe nobody has because we didn't give ourselves life. Mm. And we sin and we're sinners and we continue sinning. So we don't have a right to judge. But can everybody coexist in their own space without trying to push the other out of their space? I, I pray for that. You be you, do you, as long as it doesn't affect me. Or my kids do you, but don't let it affect. My problem with the LGBTQ is when you start making it look like it's a disability, which it's not. It's sexuality. It's who you choose to sleep with. That is not a disease. It's not a disability. It's your choice. And you're going to be judged for it. That's between you and God. But for shoving it down our kids, no, you're not going to Like, hands up. Don't tell my kids anything. Those are my kids. I'm raising them. So everybody should be able to exist and coexist without pushing each other off. Because I repeat, and I'm going to say again, we have no right or audacity to decide who should live and how they should live. Believe you me, if you believe in God, if you listen to God, if, if you understand God, then that's his job. He judged Sodom and Gomorrah. He, 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 he said, like, he can do anything. He can move mountains. He, he doesn't need you to do it for him. Him. So he didn't send you to tell people, don't exist, you need to be stoned. Then we should stone so many people, but we don't. I'm telling you the truth. If sodomy, and sodomy is actually rape of boys, don't confuse sodomy and sex. Those are two different things. Rape, sodomy, sex are very different things. Don't confuse them. If he can do all that, then what gives us the right to judge other people? What are you, our judge? He, he's, he's the judge of it all. We should understand that if you see someone to be stoned, then they're stoned. Then that's life is on you. Then who gave you the right to decide who lives or dies? When we understand that as a human being, your job in this world is to live, impact people in whatever way you can impact people, love people. The reason we have so many depressed people, the reason we have so many people misusing mental health, the reason we have these problems, we don't love. 
when I came in this conversation, I was actually angry when she called me. I was ranting on social media. But then I calmed down. And then he told me something so important. If I get angry, then I won't hear you. Context. So I listened to everybody yeah. so calmly. Are you getting me? Like <laughs> I got where Nyambure is coming from. I got Desi. I got the UN. I get everybody 100%. I got Antonia. Like I have learned so much today. You have no idea. I listened and I learned. If we can be able to listen to each other. Because you see, they don't hate each other. That's a joke. They don't even have, they have no reason to even argue with each other. So why are we fighting? We should be fighting for different things. We should be fighting to make sure no child is ever raped. No child is ever sodomized. We should be fighting for her to never be that hurt. Yeah. We should be fighting for no That's woman to ever be that broken. Yeah. That's what we should be fighting. And I get when Edda says, it's a Western thing. I support her 100%. That agenda that always you a series. And then people, and I'm like, I cannot watch this series with my kids. These men are going to kiss. It, it, it's... Mm. It's too Indeed. much. Indeed. We need to go back and watch no more movies with our children. I want to watch Mr. Bean and laugh with my kids mm -hmm. and not have anything mm -hmm. coming between. So I get where everybody is coming from. Let's find all a way to exist because if God did not want anybody to exist, then we wouldn't. He doesn't right. make a mistake yeah. and he does not make a mistake with what he does. So we are alive for a reason. Let's learn to exist. Yeah. Thank you, Anita. Yeah. Nyambura. Antonia. <laughs> <laughs> you have something. Antonia, please. All right. Um, I'm truly grateful yes. for, for this conversation. I am for part two. <laughs> <laughs> you are for part two. Okay. Uh, and, and it's really because we've expressed ourselves and found a platform uh, where we are able to say what we think, where we are coming from, what we have been through, uh, been able even to express what we are uncomfortable about and what we will not negotiate yes. about. Yes. Um, in my in my uh, in my final comments, I want to make two. One is a correction for Darcy that I did not say that homosexuals are the majority who are going to hell. I quoted a verse that the first people that Revelation mentions who will go to hell are homosexuals. But that verse doesn't end with homosexuals. Full stop. No, no, no. It goes on to people who are in the occult, people who are sexually immoral. You know, people who are and that verse goes on and on and on. Because it is simply God reiterating, this is what I cannot stand. And I have expressed my love to you through this person called Jesus. You reject my love, then I cannot spend eternity with you. Simple. That's what the Bible is teaching. Because people have rejected God's love. The second thing that I want to uh, uh, say as I, as I finish is let's step back. Remember where we began. Let's step back and ask ourselves, why are we here? Mm -hmm. If the Supreme Court hadn't ruled what they ruled, it's very likely right now we'll be discussing many other things. Like now the, the, there's just so much happening in this the country. The on Monday. Like High that one. Living. Yes. yes. So, but the Supreme Court ruled as they did. Friends, that's why we're here. We are not here because all of a sudden there are people called LGBTQIA. No, no, no. Those ones have been. Plus. Plus. There's a plus. Very important. They have been. Okay? We've interacted with them. That's not why we're here and having this conversation. We are having a conversation because back in 2010, there was a certain conversation. People were up in arms and the committee of experts guaranteed Kenyans you will not hear of homosexuality being given space or even um, legalized, legitimized mm -hmm. in the constitution. Mm -hmm. You all remember that because there was a risk that the vipengeles, the, the clauses, yes. And it was really because there were terminologies that were being introduced that categorically, like the church was ahead saying, if you take this word and unpack it, it is going to create room for, like now the words discriminalization, sex, you know, these are just words. But if you look at the Supreme Court ruling, they have taken that word sex and they have gone ahead to unpack it interpret. and even interpret it to include now sexual orientation. Exactly the things that people were concerned about. Why were people concerned even back then? It's because as a people, the first thing God created in us is self-preservation. Mm -hmm. Okay? So self-preservation in the context of humanity is family. Anything that undermines the natural order is against the 
posterity of us as a people. And that's why I call on us to see this 1960s strategy and ideology as the enemy. Because those guys who thought that way, who are pushing this agenda, those are against every person who wants to one day have a family, raise children. Like she has talked so passionately as a mom, that as a mom, there is conversation I do not want my children to participate in. If they grow up after 18 and they decide whatever they decide, even as a mom now, I can't even spank them. You get. But if it's coming in cartoons, if it is being taught comprehensive sexuality education in class, no. That's what we are saying as a people, that there is a certain conduct that is harmful to family. And if it is harmful to family, it's an enemy against all of us. Now, if you are having certain challenges and realities, there is help. So I reiterate that I believe the position of a majority of Kenyans, their concern is this. Once you go to that which the Constitution has said is a crime, and you give it opportunity to associate, because that's where the conversation is at right now, then literally what you are saying is anyone who associates has now uh, a basis to demand my right. Okay? My right, that means it will enter education. My right, it means it will show up in the media. Yeah. My right, those things that you're afraid your children will see, now they will see because now this has been given space. Okay, and the people behind the sexual revolution, oh, they're well moneyed. Yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah. they will push you. You're talking about shoving it down our throats, it will reach our intestines. Okay, <laughs> you understand? Right. Okay, yes, so yes, having yes, yes. that understanding, yeah. it means that all Kenyans of goodwill will come together and say, We are here having this conversation because the Supreme Court has gone ahead to ratify that which we as a people have said we do not want because the constitution captures the thoughts of the majority of the population because this is also a democratic mm -hmm. state mm -hmm. okay so if the majority of the population are saying uh uh to that then you give it space okay that's why the examples are coming okay so now the murderers can associate and be given right to associate mm -hmm. when the murderers come together what do you think they will be planning how do we murder, get away with it, and also push our agenda in school to make sure that children understand murdering is not so bad. I am murdering because I was born that way. I have an affinity. Now, anything that is rendered a crime, let it all be treated as same. And that's why we are having this conversation, because of the Supreme Court. So that means everything Kenyans can do to go back and change that law we need to do. And as a Mzazi, I will rise and I will rally my fellow Wazazis. Let's do something about this to protect our children. That will be my final comment. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, so I think I spoke on some of those things. Um, so let's just, um, let me, my parting shot will be this, that queer people are people and uh, we are not sins. They are human beings. Uh, my disability was referring to my ADHD and autism. My queerness is not a disability, it's a part of who I am. It is the entirety of me. And I, honestly speaking, when you say, um, <laughs> let me forget that thought, but <laughs> I was about to, but let me just forget that thought. But <laughs> hey, anyway, regardless, in every religion you're going to hell, regardless. So. And when you're speaking for an ideal, you said the binary is the ideal. The ideal is heaven. Um, if you don't believe heaven is on earth, I think we should leave the ideal for heaven. Because there's a point you said this, um, the, the man and the woman is the ideal, the family is the ideal, right? All those studies, ideals. Scientific studies. Yeah, ideal. Yeah. yeah, so if we are living in a perfect world, let's do the perfect things. But we do not live in a perfect world, right? Let's do the imperfect things. Let's deal with human beings as they are. Because... Um, I want to talk about the putting queerness in media and all that. That's a whole other conversation outside myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to speak about how I'm raising my child because that's my business. Because she, she'll speak about whatever she wants. She'll, 
she's a child she's very tiny yet so regardless um at the end of the day queer people are people in every religion you're going to hell if you understand those two things really? they're good okay doc isn't she just or something yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, i would love to say that uh, all of us are children of god yeah. and god is love and any loving father by the way my ex-husband was a really loving father and that's why my sons turned out to be the way they are um i believe that there are very many wonderful men out there and uh to just blanket them and say they're all dogs is not right. They just don't advertise themselves. Eh? So um, God is a loving father, and a, father, a loving father will give children boundaries because there are always consequences for choices, eh? whether it's any part of the sexual revolution, anybody who uh, oversteps those boundaries that God has set will suffer the consequences, whether it's in the Gay and Lesbian Medical Association results or anything like that, breakdown of the family. I'm really passionate about the family as the bedrock of society and marriage being the bedrock of society. Because uh, in those 27 years that I was married, I've seen that children who are raised with both biological parents definitely have different outcomes from any other different kind of family. And um, what else? Yeah, so I wanted also to, to call out the sexual and reproductive health and rights agenda, which is pushing the, the sexual revolution ideology. If you see any organization with SRHR, it's all about pushing contraception from the age of 10, abortion from the age of 10, surrogacy, which really harms women, but they don't. So women, surrogate women are also part of the sexual revolution survivors. Uh, it pushes uh, IVF as, as now we, we, there's so many embryos uh, floating in fridges now uh, and those are human beings. Our constitution says that also and we believe that life begins at conception. And so we have them, they always present the idea that it's about um, love and oh let's help the infertile people. But all the reproductive health network and sexual and reproductive health meetings that I've been to they always talk about their hidden agenda and what they're going to tell the public. So they'll say, oh, it's for infertility, but actually somebody approached me and said, this is really for the gays. We want uh, them to be able to adopt because we know that it's a sterile union. Then um, we also have the, the people who are genuinely suffering and who want to come out of it. There's so many people who have come out of it, though this information is being suppressed. Uh, the people who are not happy in their identity and uh, so the, this identity crisis can also be helped. And um, yeah, so it should not be in, in policy because this is the, the way other countries got their foot in the door. And then they legalized same sex, what they call marriage, which is a union. Uh, uh, but the way God designed us is, if you want to know the purpose of everything, look at the structures. Eh? So I don't agree with you, my dear daughter, that sex that sodomy is sex because sex is vaginal penal that is the definition of sex and so even the structure of the the, the anus that's why they get uh, uh, anal, uh prolapse rectal prolapse and they have to walk around in nappies because it was not designed for that anyway so um then yeah so the postmodern ideology these people have so much money and so those of us who are pro-family who are pro-life we don't have money. And so what we have... I am a struggling I have a No, we don't have... We don't have... What I'm saying is... The people... The people who are pushing... No, what I'm saying is... The people who are pushing the gender ideology right now, I have evidence that they have 30 billion, 38 billion to indoctrinate our children. Yes. Yeah, so they, they actually... It's very well funded by the Soros Foundation, so many foundations. Soros, they're determined to destroy the African family, to reduce our population. And also, really, let's talk about the demographic winter. Right now, Japan has declared an emergency. They're not having children. Everybody's old. 
So the, these practices of the sexual revolution ideology is to reduce the population. We need mothers, we need fathers, we need children, we need the next generation. So it's about stopping the next generation. The Western world all are below replacement. You, know, you need to have 2.1 children per woman. So this is, these kind of ideologies are the death of our society. We love marriage, we love our culture, we love so many things about it. Let's also address the woundedness that of people that come to us and, and speak the truth in love and embrace them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I want to know where this money is. Okay, <laughs> we will know in part two. Yes. <laughs> we will know in part two, but thank you so much. I work I, very hard for my money. Yes. So it's really sad to hear when people have this perception that you are LGBTQ funded. members are funded. Like, I've never no, been no, funded by anybody. The funding is just because the government has refused funded. to do its job to protect the people who cannot be protected. So other organizations do it, but now it's funding because we don't want violence on our lives and our person. Because the thing is, you're trying to legitimize violence. I don't, adv I don't violence. advocate violence at all. No, 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 no. please. Uh -uh. I was also triggered. No, 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 no. I don't want to connect everything. No violence. This is why you say no violence. Because I'm using my entire brain to connect all the things. Thank you, guys. Thank you so, so much. We are talking about a lot of things, but we need to connect. Thank you, guys, guys. Thank you so much. Because we agreed, we are going to come back for part two. We are going to. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. definitely, I, I, I really want us to have more of these conversations because, as you said, it's important that we have platforms where you can authoritatively say what you can agree to and they can also say what they can agree to. And I always have a good friend who says we agree and disagree okay. on pre on principles, right? So thank you so much. Just one thing. Yes. Please, can we talk about, Why? can we talk about parenting? Yes. And church, please talk about sexuality to your children. Yeah. Because that is a real thing that's really missing. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm -hmm. yeah? Affirm mm -hmm. your child. Be there. Communicate. Discipline lovingly. Mm -hmm. Empathize with your child. And listen to your Forgiveness. kids. Forgiveness. G is God, be God-centered. H is to be honest. And I is integrity. Integrity is what you do in secret when no one is watching. Mm -hmm. And then J, joy. If we have happy, joyful families, this society will thrive. No, you know, it's so, it's so hard for me to even stop you. Like, I'll feel so much guilt, you know? Yeah, so don't talk again, though. Because if you start... A parenting, if you, I'm a, a parenting yes, coach. Thanks, yeah, Thank you so coach. much, guys. As I yeah. said, we will be having part two of this conversation. Our editor will be able to put your social handles or the emails that maybe you might provide so that other people can connect with you guys. Mm -hmm. I'll be putting them under your tag name because if I start now saying, where can people find you, we will not wind up. So, and also pin on the comment section guys below is where you can find more of their contact details i appreciate you daddy and i know you have to reply to the people on twitter <laughs> and everything so. are you gonna take your tweet down <laughs> yes <laughs> So thank you so much for even availing yourself. I do not take it for granted that you've sat so long to have this conversation. I've not given you anything to contribute to this conversation. So all I can say is Asante Nisana for honoring my request to come and be part of this conversation. And guys, thank you so much. I want to hear your thoughts and views on the comment section. I will definitely be having a part two of this conversation and maybe you can attend if you would want to. So check all the details on our community pages and also let me know what you think on the comment section below. An incredible thank you to the team that is behind all this work. I do not take your efforts for granted. Yes. <laughs> We appreciate you, Edgar, Muga, Lynette, um, Gala. Uh, we also have Joshua here. We do not, uh, honestly, I don't take you guys for granted. And of course, our incredible editor, Sam and Kelvin, for compiling this episode and making sure that it reaches you guys right on top right on time. Where to find me? Info at LNN Anita Wacha. Where to find me? Info at LNN.digital or lin.ngugi at LNN.digital. To on next time, uh, have yourself a safe day and take care. Bye.